want to know whether the Biden family's business dealings affected American policy towards the Ukraine. The White House claims to be committed to bringing truth and transparency to government. It just seems like it's only interested when it's convenient for his administration. Now, Mr. Bobolinsky, did Hunter ever tell you at any point the value of the Burisma income to him? Call him ever mentioning that to me. Okay, did he ever say it was his only income at that time? Oh, okay. Actually, I stand corrected. There's a... There, <laughs> There's a text message. I never discussed it with him. I was in Monaco at the Grand Prix. He was in Monaco for the Burisma board meeting. He set up a meeting with me. He didn't show up at that meeting. Obviously, you can imagine I wasn't too happy. And he responded to a text me asking him what's going on. And in that text, he states he's on the back of Cola's yacht fighting for the only income he has. But it wasn't from Burisma. It was from the Kazakh deal that he's talking about. I never discussed that with him after that. That was a single exchange between him and I. No. Corruption and a lack of transparency from the Biden family have been common themes through the House Oversight Committee's investigation. And even when asking for simple drafts of then Vice President Biden's speech in the Ukraine, the White House has been anything but transparent. President Biden has done and will continue to do everything in his power to cover up the truth, especially when it's hard to hear. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh gentleman yields back. Mr. Bobulinski uh, yields back to me for one minute. Is there anything that you want to uh, respond to? No, you don't worry about Mr. Goldman. We don't pay any attention to Mr. Goldman either, but uh, is there anything that anyone said up here that you want to take about uh, 55 seconds to respond to? Um, it's tempting. I mean, my biggest uh, appeal to everyone in this room is I wish you would spend the time focusing on the fact that the Chinese Communist Party infiltrated the White House of the United States of America through the Biden family. I don't say that lightly. It's not a joke. I was willing to die for this country, as was my father and both my grandfathers and my brother. This is serious, serious stuff. We should be asking how that happened. Take the Biden name and the Biden family completely out of it. How did the Chinese Communist Party infiltrate the White House of exactly. the United States of America? Let's start there, focus on those facts, what they did, how they did it, why they used money, why they used private enterprises instead of military stuff and other stuff. That is huge to our national security. So I appreciate you yielding that time to me, Mr. Chairman. Well, well thank you. And I'll just say this. Mr. Tlaib and Ms. Uh, uh, Presley criticized the investigation. But I think most Americans care about public corruption. And they realize the FBI hasn't done the job, the DOJ hasn't done their job, the IRS hasn't done their job, they've been told to stand down. All that's left is the House Oversight Committee, and we will do our job. And pursuant to the previous order, because votes have been called again, the committee stands in recess subject to the call of the chair. The committee will reconvene five minutes after floor votes. Reconvene. The chair recognizes Mr. Swalwell for five minutes. Mr. Bobulinski, um, in your interactions with the Biden family, which you've told us uh, all about uh, throughout the day, did you ever observe the Chinese government grant 22 patents to any of Joe Biden's children while Joe Biden was in office? I did not. Did you ever observe the Chinese government, um, I'm sorry, did you ever observe Joe Biden ever own or operate any hotels while he was in public office and take millions of dollars from foreign governments? I did not. Did you ever observe Joe Biden employ any of his children or their spouses in the White House as vice president or president? I, I did not. I can't speak to that. Did you ever observe while observing the Bidens uh, the Bidens install a family member to be the co-chair of the DNC? I'm sorry, ask the question again? Did you ever observe the Bidens install a family member to be the co-chair of the Democratic National Committee? Uh, I did not. Did President Biden or anyone in his family take $2 billion from the Saudi government? Not that I'm aware of. Did President Biden or anyone in his family uh, get fined $355 million for tax fraud? Um, not that I'm aware of. Mr. Parnas, as you've observed uh, Mr. Bobulinski today and, and his fealty and dedication and loyalty to the Trump family, is that something you recognize as somebody who was also in that cult before? Absolutely. Is there, is there hope for our man, Tony, here? Uh, very little, I think, until he hits a brick wall. And in your experience, on a scale of 1 to 10, how eager was the Trump campaign in your interactions to manufacture dirt on Joe Biden? 
One to 10, 10 being the highest. 10 plus. 10 plus. Would it surprise you, Mr. Parnas, that the Russians and in their disinformation campaign outlets have often cited Chairman Comer's uh, testimony and allegations against the Biden family to make their own allegations against Joe Biden? No, it doesn't surprise me because that's exactly what they want to happen. Mr. Chairman, it's over. It's over. It's time to pack it up. And I want to give you the top 10 reasons why impeachment is dead. Number 10, your key witness today is testifying from the slammer. Number nine, key evidence of a bribe that you all relied on. The guy who said that has been indicted for lying about that bribe, and he's a Russian asset. Number eight, another key witness has been indicted as a Chinese agent. Number seven, during the Hunter Biden interview, Mr. Chairman, you didn't even stay for the whole time. Number six, Chairman Jason Smith didn't show up at all to the Hunter Biden interview. The same day, number five, Daryl Issa said, it's a big nothing. Number four, today Jim Jordan began his remarks not by relying on any evidence for this investigation, but he went off attacking the DOJ about what they're doing with the Catholics. Number three, you all still have not sent the articles of impeachment for the Mayorkas impeachment to the Senate. And that happened last month. Number two, you're now talking about a criminal referral, but if you had evidence for a criminal referral, then you have evidence to impeach somebody for high crimes and misdemeanors. And number one, and I'm sorry to say this, Fox News isn't even carrying this today. In fact, one of their anchors as they broke away 10 minutes in said, this is the same hearing over and over and over. At what point are you gonna fish or cut bait? So I just have to tell you, it's over. Impeachment's over. Dunzo, bye-bye, rigor mortis, lights out, curtain drop, mic drop, peace, adios, sayonara, au revoir, or a language that you all understand, doi siv danya. Did I say that right, Mr. Parnas? Yes. I dare you to impeach, but you won't because you don't have the evidence. And because you don't have the evidence, you don't have the votes. Guys, it's dead. And so I'm here to pronounce the time of death. Five sixteen. Say it in Chinese. Impeachment is dead. Five sixteen. Biden impeachment's dead. Joe Biden has been acquitted. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair now recognizes Ms. Luna from Florida for five minutes. Mr. Parnas, I want to read to you a few quotes from a letter that you wrote to the House Oversight Committee. First, you said that I will remind you that Solcheski's answers are in the report that the House Oversight Committee published. In this document, he stated that Hunter Biden was never asked or assigned to speak with anyone in the U.S. on behalf of Burisma. Mr. Parnas, are you aware that according to Amos uh, Hochstein, a U.S. Senate, our U.S. State Department official, in a transcribed interview with the Senate, Hunter Biden requested to have a meeting with him in November of 2015. Mr. Hochstein testified that he met with Hunter Biden and they spoke about Burisma. So yes or no, that statement that you made to House Oversight was incorrect. The statement was correct because that statement. Yes or no? The statement is coming so from the yes, words it was? of CEO Burisma. It's directly conf this was conflicting his with answers. testimony. Not, Next question. Rep, that was not there my were answer. no political or lobbying firm efforts Burisma. on behalf of Burisma in your statement that you made to House Oversight. Mr. Parnas, are you aware that Burisma's engagement of Blue Star Strategies, which was a lobbying firm that was a lobbying the U.S. government on behalf of Burisma and Mikola Slocheski, and according to Sally Painter and Karen Termitano, the heads of Burisma. So that statement, again, that you wrote to this committee was incorrect, yes or no? no. No, you're incorrect because no, I that said, is incorrect. No, the, you're directly no, conflicting no, with that. No, My final no, question for you, Mr. No, Parnas, is by, next year that me, nobody from CEO the company of Charisma has ever spoken to Joe Biden. It's okay, Chairman. I got him. Mr. Parnas, <laughs> Devin Archer testified to this committee that Vadim Pucharski, the corporate secretary of Marisma, sat down for dinner with Joe Biden. So that statement also was incorrect that you wrote to this committee, yes or no? No, it's not incorrect. Mr. Chairman, I think this witness's credibility is shot. I'd like to, re I'd like to <laughs> give the remaining of my time to the amazing uh, representative from Florida, Representative Matt Gates. Very good. The Democrats could have sent anyone. They could have sent Hunter Biden, they could have sent Joe Biden, they could have sent Rob Walker, they could have sent Devin Archer. The Democrats could have sought any person 
to come and refute the direct evidence backed up by bank statements, backed up by calendar entries, backed up by emails, backed up by text messages. And who did the Democrats send to clear the name of Joe and Hunter Biden? They sent Lev Parnas. Lev Parnas, who was charged with enough crimes and violating our campaign finance laws to, like, serve 50 years, but he gets four months. And, and like, the, the, the big, like, grand criminal conspiracy Mr. Parnas is involved in is using Russian oligarch money to try to get marijuana licenses, which seems odd, and then using that Russian money to plow into campaigns in order to achieve that objective. But the fraud he committed wasn't just on our election system by plowing Russian money, it was also a fraud on his own investors who didn't get it. So I guess, Mr. Bobulinski, as you hear uh, Maxwell Frost, my colleague on the Democrat side, say that Mr. Parnas, fresh off of his prison time, is the most credible witness we've had to address these business dealings. What's your reaction to that? I think it's laughable that uh, the Democrats are asking Lev Parnas to weigh in on my credibility, a convicted felon that served jail time. I have an impeccable record. Now, he warned me earlier in this hearing that they're coming for me. I look no, forward I didn't worry. to that. I said just keep talking. I, You'll I be look, there soon. I look forward to that, Mr. Parnas. Keep lying. You'll be there soon. Well, and, and is that, when it, is that a threat, yeah, Mr. Parnas? No, it's just the truth. If no, did you, you say they I were coming that. for me? No, I said if you keep lying, you will end up in prison. I'm not lying. You're well, the one who was not, lying. You have nothing to say. You're the one who went to prison for lying. What am I lying. lying for? Tell me what we're lying for, Mr. Baberensky. What? You don't even know what you're talking about. What am I lying? You went to what prison lying for lying and defrauding no, your what investors? What am I lying here? What am I lying here? Oh, the list is so long. Guys, we don't have enough time. I think Mr. Gates only has a minute. I think you're a little scared, just like Mr. Gates. So one Because Mr. Gates doesn't even ask a question. You're filibustering. I've been here for six hours and not one of your committee members has asked me one question. You want well, to hear the truth? You, hold on, no, hold on. Yeah, no, no, no. You I asked ask a question, question about your illegal business I've been dealing. here for seven hours. Mr. Bob Ask me some questions. Fraud is a Stop crime, me. right? Go ahead. Ask Correct. Me. Fraud is a crime. Fraud is a crime and you observed fraud on the part of the Bidens, right? I did. Crystal clear. So much so I had an independent law firm spend $300,000 to analyze that fraud and put together a fully ready, viable lawsuit against the Biden family. Family. And bribery is a crime, right? Correct. And what you observed with Joe Biden trying to get you into this business deal with Hunter Biden, what you later learned about that business deal and how the money was flowing from the Chinese Communist Party to Hunter Biden, to other members of the Biden family, uh, did, did that concern you as a potential feature of money laundering? It did. It did. I started to grow concern uh, after I met Joe Biden and then I sat down with Jim Biden and he used the term plausible deniability with me. And that's documented because I went back to my lawyers and I asked them, something doesn't is starting to feel unright. And they went and hired another law firm to give me a full FCPA workup to go through the details of what could be done and what couldn't be done. Sounds like high crimes and misdemeanors to me, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Very good. Chair now recognizes uh, the chairwoman of the House Education Committee, Ms. Fox from North Carolina. Dr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, I want to thank my colleagues for what you have been doing here today, unraveling these um, issues. Mr. Galinas, in your written testimony, you state that your, quote, objective was to build a diversified private equity platform which would be anchored by a globally known Wall Street brand together with a globally known political name, Biden, end quote. Is it correct that Harvest Fund Management, a $300 billion Chinese financial services company closely connected to the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, was interested in partnering with you and your business partners? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Why was the CCP connected Harvest Fund Management interested in doing business with you and your partners, Hunter Biden and Devin Archer? The, the only plausible reason, and the reason we even discussed, was, was because of the um, access that it provided. There was a, a quote that was attributed to, to uh, uh, Henry Zhao, the chairman, that talked about the access that it provided. So there's, there's documentation that was uh, contemporaneous that, that said what their interest was, and that interest was political access. Thank you. Is it correct that Harvest Fund Management believed that Joe Biden would take a seat on that company's board after his vice presidency ended? 
Yes, that's correct. And there were, there were emails to that effect around that time that, that were circulated by people who were there as part of those conversations, including the golf outing. Thank you. Are you aware of Hunter Biden ever speaking to his father, Joe Biden, about the plan to have him join the board of Harvest Fund Management? Yes, I, I witnessed that, yes. It seems clear that Joe Biden was aware of his family's use of his office and influence to do business with America's adversaries and therefore a choice to pursue personal gain over national security. Mr. Bobolinsky, is it true that former Vice President Joe Biden met with Xi Jinping, the chairman of CEFC China Energy? Uh, it is based on Rob Walker saying yes to that in a transcribed interview. I personally was not at that meeting. When did this meeting take place based on what Mr. Walker said? Yeah, in my understanding, it would have been February 2017. After they had a meeting in Miami, um, I believe James Gillier got on the corporate jet of CFC and flew with Yi Jianming and Director Zhang to DC in preparation for that meeting. After this meeting with former Vice President Joe Biden and Chairman Yi, were any payments made to the Biden family or associates? Yes, well, it gets to that point of obfuscation. $3 million was wired to Rob Walker's account on March 1st. Actually, they sent two wires. The first wire got kicked back, and then they sent a second wire on March 1st, 2017, to Robinson Walker LLC. And then, as your committees walk through today, they parsed that out to the Biden family in numerous different payments. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it is clear that Joe Biden is the common element in all of Hunter Biden's attempts to do business with China. There's a pattern emerging that the Biden family and associates, including Joe Biden himself, deliberately chose personal gain over the safety and best interest of the very Americans Joe Biden was elected to serve, protect, and defend. With that, I'll yield the balance of my time to Mr. Gates. Hunter Biden's deposition. Question. Do you think some of your business associates we've spoken about today, Mr. Archer, Mr. Bobulinski, Mr. Galanis, do you think they had an expectation that your dad had any role or involvement in any of your joint business dealings? Answer from Hunter Biden, not an expectation from me. There was never a single time I can remember saying, hey, we'll get my dad involved. Hey, let's get my dad on the phone. Hey, let's, you know, what can we get out of dad for this? Mr. Galanis, what's your reaction to that testimony from Hunter Biden in light of you describing the Biden lift? I think it, it, it's patently false. It's belied by, by emails, and, and uh, I think that there's documentation that says that that's just an untruthful statement. And what, I, what I'm trying to understand, Mr. Galanis, is there you are sitting in a prison cell for a financial crime where you were an associate with Hunter Biden and some of the other players there, and they're out enjoying Southern California, and you're sitting in a prison cell, and they've got the ability to come and give this false testimony to Congress. Is it, is it your belief that the Biden Justice Department uh, retaliates against people who speak out against the Bidens and their crimes? I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm living that. I think, uh, to clarify, I took responsibility for my crimes. I pleaded guilty. I've served eight years of clean conduct, and, and I think I've rehabilitated myself quite a bit in that, that period of time, and evidence, a track record. But I would say that there is unquestionably a, a, a pattern of two tiers of justice, and that's become a popularized term, and it's something that I've a, a, a lived experience that I've gone through. Yield back. Before I recognize Mr. Waltz, uh, for what purpose does Mr. Big seek recognition? I want to include a re uh, an article in a record. The article is entitled, Talib renews her, quote, impeach the mf -er, close quote, call against Trump. Without objection to order, for what purpose does Mr. Gates seek recognition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record. The uh, press release from the Department of Justice, Lev Parnas, sentenced to 20 months in prison for campaign finance, wire fraud, and false statement offenses. With, without objection, so ordered. Chair now recognizes Mr. Waltz from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I find it uh, incredibly rich Mr. Swalwell is going to come to this committee and lecture us about how China penetrates our government. I think that's something <laughs> he may know a thing or two about. But let's, let's talk about how China has penetrated the highest levels uh, of this government, including this president and, and this White House, because I think the visual 
uh, is, is incredibly important. Um, Mr. Bobulinski, Hunter Biden portrayed Chairman Yi, the chairman of CEFC, uh, to Jim Biden as a protege of Xi. Is that accurate? Not only is it accurate, and it wasn't just Hunter Biden, it was James Gillier, Rob Walker. I wouldn't have used the word protege. They just basically, you know. You don't run China's largest state-owned energy company without being close to Chairman Correct. Xi. Correct. Right, fair enough. Uh, and by the mid-2000s, uh, Chairman Ye ran a, a business empire estimated, as much as you can estimate a Chinese state-owned enterprise, tens of billions, including and from a national security standpoint, this is the, the critical piece here, including implementing China's Belt and Road Initiative, not just all over the world, right here in the United States. Is that accurate? A hundred percent. So CFC was effectively the shadow arm of the Chinese government deploying tens of billions of dollars around the world, very well documented. At its peak, I think it was doing $50 billion of revenue per year, one of the top five largest debt diplomacy, companies. where they are taking electrical grids, they are bribing officials, uh, they take as collateral, uh, not just grids, ports, airports, key infrastructure that the Chinese government could then leverage and use against uh, any country, but also here in the United States. I mean, that's how the Belt and Road Initiative works. Heck, I was just in the Armed Services Committee with a commander of Indo-PACOM, uh, our Pacific Command, talking about how China is basically gobbling up uh, infrastructure around the world, including here. Uh, so by the, by the mid, what, 2015, 2016, Hunter Biden's developed a very lucrative business relationship. By 2017, Hunter Biden's forged such a partnership with Chairman Ye that he planned to share an office space with him and then just removed Vice President uh, Biden at the House of Sweden in Washington, D.C., correct? Correct. So here's what's interesting. And building on Chairman Fox's uh, questions, within days of him leaving the vice presidency, ostensibly for work performed, $3 million flows through these shell companies that we've depicted here. I mean, you could see how complicated this is, but the key piece is the flow to Howie Biden, to Jim and Sarah Biden, to Hunter Biden and his various affiliates. And the kicker here, Mr. Chairman, is that we know Hunter is then complaining about paying all his dad's bills. He's complaining to the other relatives saying, you freeloaders, I'm having to use all this money to pay the big guy's bills, house renovations and all kinds of things, correct? Correct, I mean, and it's important for the American people to understand the $3 million was three of $20 million that the Bidens expected to be paid for the work in 2015 and 2016. Mr. Chairman. And that's not just my word. That is documented. That's all documented. Numerous. Bank records, text messages, emails. Mr. Chairman, Bob Menendez's wife can't get paid by the Egyptians and then provide that money over to pay Golbar Bob's, uh, uh, Senator Menendez's bills. I can't have my daughter get paid by, I don't know, Kazakhstan, Russia, and China, and then pay my bills. Sure. Uh, and we know also that they had commingled funds with the Vice President of the United States. When we talk about crimes, let's talk about the crimes. We know he perjured himself. That's a crime. We know he was acting as a foreign agent. And he, was he registered under FARA? Was he registered as a foreign agent? Not that I'm aware of. Was his dad complicit in him acting as a foreign agent through meetings and dinners and what have you? That's a crime. A hundred percent. That's crime number two. He was clearly acting uh, in that capacity. We have the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. And we already have him, thanks to the work of this committee, for tax evasion. So, Mr. Chairman, there are multiple crimes that this committee has established ample evidence we must move uh, to impeachment. We cannot allow this to stand. Uh, and I look forward to seeing those references to the Department of Justices. For this alone, this is a critical national security issue. The Chinese Communist Party call it the princelings. They don't go after the principle they want to influence. They go through the sun. And it is right out of their playbook. And they've done it at the highest levels of the United States government. I yield my time. Very good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a, a couple of... Uh you see requests of that's all right. Proceed. One is from Devin Archer's uh, transcribed interview testifying that Biden, Joe Biden, had nothing to do with any of Devin Archer's business ventures with Hunter. Second is um, 
the Declassified Intelligence Community Assessment from the National Intelligence Council, March 2021, detailing efforts by Russian actors to interfere in the 2020 U.S. elections. And finally, most importantly, the U.S. District Court decision from the Southern District of New York in United States versus Galanis, um, where uh, Mr. Galanis was described as a con artist who wanted to be in business with Hunter Biden, but never was, and how they thought that um, they could add layers of legitimacy to their con operation. If I could have those introduced. Without objection, so ordered. Now the chair recognizes Mr. Gates from Florida. You're a serious business person, Mr. Bobulinski, right? I am. Uh, unlike the convicted felon next to you, you've served in the military, right? Correct. You've done big deals. Correct. Complicated deals. Deals that involved foreign businesses, right? Uh, correct. And so what I'm trying to figure out is when you came to realize that you showed up at the wrong party. Because you kind of strike me as a guy who showed up to do a legitimate business deal and you ended up instead at a bribe. And so as you're looking at CEFC, as you're having this meeting with Joe Biden, as Hunter Biden is introducing you to his web of contacts, when did you go from serious businessman, Tony Bobulinski working to make a buck in a capitalist system to a guy worried that you had been unwittingly ensnared into Hunter and Joe Biden's bribe operation with the Chinese Communist Party? I appreciate the question. It wasn't an aha moment, it was more of a process. I am a serious businessman, demonstrated by the different deals I've done around the world and uh, the success of them. But it started, remember, the Biden family wasn't my entry into this. James Gillier, who I'd known for over 10 years, who traveled the world doing business, kept trying to get me involved. I really had no interest, no interest. I got, I sat down in the spring of 2017 to walk through things, and then I quickly put together two businesses, Sinohawk and Oneida. After the meetings in Los Angeles with Hunter and Joe Biden, it started to sort of, bells and whistles started to go off when Jim Biden used the term plausible deniability. Plausible yeah. deniability is the first moment, straight from the lips of Jim Biden, right on the heels of your discussion with Joe Biden, where you start to think, this might not be legit. Correct, and my lawyers at the time could attest to that because I reached out to them saying, Listen, I'm a former naval officer. I held a Q security clearance. I couldn't collect. Somebody couldn't take me to dinner for $50. This just does not make sense to me. But and you proceed. But you proceed, and then later this thing starts to get a lot ug uglier. What's the moment you go from, okay, your spidey senses are up, you're analyzing this, to now you know this is a crime that you are bearing witness to? The end of July, when the Biden family put them right front and center in the middle of a $9 billion transaction between the Russian state-owned energy company Rosneft and CFC, a surrogate for the Chinese Communist Party. And was there ever a time in the deals you were involved in where you started to see the money move around the legitimate business enterprise and toward the pockets of the Bidens? Well, the challenge, Mr. Gates, with that is at the time they moved the money Right, you guys have the text messages where Hunter Biden shook down Director Zhang, but I was not aware of that. I spent a year asking questions of, this doesn't make sense to me, where's the money? I, I stepped in and had lawyers work to dissolve the two entities. I didn't know till years later that they had defrauded me, they had gotten paid all this money and um, all this craziness. The yeah, amount it, of fact- It just seems I, pretty simple. This is either a bribe or a business. It was a bribe from the Chinese Communist Party. And, you, and, and, and I don't say that lightly. There's 1,200 pages, eight days of testimony in the Southern District of New York. I encourage everyone watching me, hearing me say this, they're publicly available, go read them. Our Department of Justice outlines in intimate detail the corruption and bribes that CFC was deploying to political officials all over the world. It wasn't so just I'm the here United to States. believe that they did this in every other country, but with the Biden family, it was pristine. It was an actual clean business. That's absurd. And you, and you came to know that, and that's when you blew the whistle, right? That's when you started to get, to get worried, when you saw Joe I Biden. I stepped away from it. There, yeah. There's the whistleblowers. I can't give them kudos enough for the bravery and the risk they put their family in. They published stuff where I am voicing the concern of the Rosneft deal. And you animated your concerns when you saw that this wasn't just a corrupt 
bribe, a corrupt business deal happening to a guy who used to be vice president. When you see that Joe, everyone's made a big deal like you're a bad guy that you showed up at the debate or you're trying to give life to these facts that you've observed, that it's so bad that you did that during a political contest. But observing this, it kind of seems like it would be unpatriotic for you to stay quiet. Of course. And so, I mean, Joe Biden running for president clearly motivated the Chinese mm -hmm. to consummate this bribe. Did it also motivate you? Well, I didn't want to go public. I wanted to simply unload all the facts, personal experiences. It's funny, there's 18 people on this committee with law degrees, including, I think, Mr. Swalwell. Evidence, firsthand testimony, is the most powerful evidence you have. I've given it, Mr. Galanis has given it, along with a whole host of other witnesses. Then, on top of that, I have thousands of documents and pages of, of legals and stuff well, like that. that. That's what's I wanted Mr. to simply Bobby Lindsay. give this information. Yeah, Congress and thing. senators. No one questioned any of your facts. Yeah. No one brought a single piece of evidence that, in, that even for a moment discredited any of the truthful testimony that you've given us. No, I see they my did time's not. expired. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Uh, that concludes our questioning. Uh, again, want to thank the witnesses. Uh, we are going to close now, and I will yield to the ranking member for a brief closing statement. Great, and I'll take an extra 32 seconds, as Mr. Gates did. Um, well, and, and while we're on Mr. Gates, he seemed to be upset about a couple different things. One was fraud, which was fascinating to me, uh, given that his hero, Donald Trump, has just been convicted civilly of bank and insurance fraud in New York uh, in a civil case, and now owes, I think it's $454 million, unless that's gone up. Uh, with interest. I think he's having a hard time uh, making that, but I'm sure that the, uh, Mr. Gates's constituents will help him out as they're shaking down Republican voters. You can pay either for Donald Trump's criminal lawyers or his civil lawyers. That's the big political choice, I suppose. Uh, he's also upset about China. Well, if you check out the Democrats' report, White House for Sale, how princes, prime ministers, and premiers paid off President Trump, you'll find that China actually gave more than $5 million to Donald Trump while he was president of the United States in direct violation of the emoluments clause, which says that nobody in federal office shall accept a present and emolument, which means a payment, an office, or title of any kind, whatever, from a king, a prince, or a foreign state. And we spent the day, again, jawboning about Hunter Biden, who has never held public office, and he's never done business with the government. And yet, we have right in front of us, in front of our very eyes, uh, mammoth corruption, unprecedented U.S. history by Donald Trump as president. And my friends don't say a single uh, word about it, but he wants to lecture Mr. Parnas about the illegal donations he made on behalf of pro-Trump super PACs. I've noticed something interesting with the people who have finally disenthralled themselves and gotten out of the Trump cult, as Mr. Parnas puts it. People like Michael Cohen, Sarah Matthews, Cassidy Hutchinson, Alyssa Griffin. There's articles about them. There are dozens of those people, and I'd be fleeing for the exits now, too. Um, what, what's so fascinating to me about it is that they don't mind when these people lie for Donald Trump. Then when they get out and start telling the truth, that's when they call them liars for what they did when they worked for Donald Trump. Mr. Parnas, they're not mad that you lied and went to prison for it and did your time. They're mad that you stopped lying for Donald Trump. Absolutely, Congressman Raskin. So when I was a state assistant attorney general, Mr. Chairman, I saw a judge on my very first day of work castigate a lawyer by saying, son, you forgot the very first rule of lawyering. When you go to court, you got to bring the evidence with you. You forgot to bring the evidence. There's no evidence. Hundreds of thousands of pages of documents, dozens of hours of testimony, but not a shred of evidence of presidential wrongdoing, much less an impeachable offense by President Biden. And you're making not just the majority a laughing stock, the whole committee a laughing stock. So it's hurting us. My members are saying, when will they call off this nonsense? So here we are. Again, Mr. Parnas, I want to thank you. You have explained to America that the allegations at the very foundation of this inquiry were predicated on Russian propaganda and disinformation, just as they were at the start of the hit job that you and Rudy Giuliani were sent to do back in 2018 and 19. And I want to thank you for showing America what real intellectual honesty and personal honesty look like and how you can grow out of the deranged 
Trump syndrome that so many of our colleagues are still suffering from today. It's time to call this investigation for what it is, Mr. Chairman. It's not just an embarrassing failure and an historic failure at that, but it's an historic betrayal of democracy, freedom, and the rule of law as Vladimir Putin tramples the freedoms and the democracy of people in Ukraine. We should be spending our time standing up for democracy and not tarnishing it with spectacles like this. I yield back. I should have brought my waiters from the farm. Uh, I want to thank our witnesses for, for being here today. Mr. Bobolinsky, Mr. Galanis have delivered testimony in front of the American people directly implicating President Biden and his family's influence peddling schemes. Schemes that brought over $24 million into the Biden family and their business associates' pockets. For what? I never heard the minority say what they did or what business the Bidens were in. Mr. Bobulinski and Mr. Galanis have provided documents supporting these claims and provided hours of testimony to this committee. Mr. Bobulinski and Mr. Galanis have not changed their stories. Mr. Bobulinski and Mr. Galanis did not ask for this hearing, but they showed up for it because they have nothing to hide. I also invited Hunter Biden to this hearing in part due to his own request that he be allowed to provide transparency and testimony before the American people. Or at least he did request this hearing, and then he sat for a deposition with the Oversight and Judiciary Committees. Now he's nowhere to be found. Mr. Bobulinski, Mr. Galanis, and others have implicated Joe Biden in the Biden family business. Hunter Biden denies his father's role in the Biden family business. This is a material discrepancy among witnesses of the highest order. I attempted to solve this problem by getting the witnesses in the same room together to straighten out any misunderstandings. It should be clear to the American people that Hunter Biden's word is as valuable as the fake services he was selling. And this committee will not play games or belittle the institution of Congress by allowing Hunter Biden to call the shots about who he testifies with or when he does it. At this point, the only person who can resolve this discrepancy about Joe Biden's participation in his family's influence peddling schemes is Joe Biden himself. As I said at the beginning of this hearing, Joe Biden was either used by his family over and over again and paraded in front of his business partners to rake in millions of dollars, or he knew exactly what he was doing to enrich his family. Joe Biden was either complicit or incompetent. And the American people deserve to know which one it is, which one it was. But neither is acceptable for the leader of the United States. I don't think anyone believes that this is acceptable behavior for the family of the president of the United States to receive tens of millions of dollars from our adversaries around the world. And they can't say one single thing they did to receive the money. Nobody supports that. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican, if you're from a big city or a small town. That's not what this democracy is about. That's not what uh, the founding fathers set up. They set this up that we have public servants come and, and provide their public service and then go on. They did not set this up for public servants to enrich themselves through their family, through influence peddling. No one is denied. Is anyone denying, Mr. Raskin, that the Biden family was influence peddling? Nobody denies that the family was influence peddling. What we, what we have here is a major discrepancy on what role Joe Biden played. We know the three former Biden associates say that Joe Biden was actively involved and knew full well what the schemes were, what the family was up to. But we have Hunter Biden testifying under oath that his dad didn't know. So in the coming days, I will invite President Biden to the Oversight Committee to provide his testimony and explain why his family received tens of millions of dollars from foreign companies with his assistance. We need to hear from the president himself. And I assure the American people that they will be able to evaluate for themselves the president's honesty and fitness 
for the office he now holds. With that. Mr. Chairman, are you going to invite Donald Trump to come and talk about his violations of the emoluments clause? You all have investigated Donald Trump for years, and I'm pretty sure I've read in the paper that there's a lot of investigations of Donald Trump. No one's investigated. Well, well we Joe impeached Biden. him. You were invited to impeach uh, Joe are you, Biden. Are today. you supporting? Uh, are you going to work with me to see that? Uh, Joe Biden comes and answers these discrepancies? I mean, this is a big deal. There's no discrepancies. There's not no been, discrepancies. No, there's, there's no evidence at all that he's committed any high crime and misdemeanor. What is it? In closing, I want to thank our panelists once again for their important and insightful testimony today. Uh, with that and without objection, all members will have five legislative days within which to submit materials and to submit additional written questions for the witnesses, which will be forwarded to the witnesses for their response. If there is no further business, without objection, the committee stands adjourned. The will come to order. I want to welcome everyone here this morning. Without objection, the chair may declare a recess at any time. Without objection... Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Jason Smith of Missouri, Representative Matt Gates of Florida, and Representative Eric Swalwell from California are waived onto the committee for the purpose of questioning the witnesses at today's committee hearing. For today's hearing, opening statements will be limited to 10 minutes for the chair and 10 minutes for the ranking member. The chair also notes that points of order pertaining to the engaging of personalities against the president will not be in order for the duration of today's hearing. Given that this is a hearing regarding this committee's impeachment inquiry, members must be allowed to speak frankly. The chair now recognizes himself for an opening statement. Today, the House Committee on Oversight will hear from witnesses who have previously provided information during our deposition and interview phase regarding the Biden family's business practices in China, Ukraine, Russia, and other places around the world. At the start of this Congress, the Oversight Committee has investigated what product or service the Biden family and their associates were selling that would justify over $24 million in payments. We've reviewed emails, bank records, text messages, suspicious activity reports at Treasury, and other evidence normally compiled during an expansive investigation such as this. The Oversight Committee has found no credible evidence of the Bidens providing any work product. The committee has ad identified no legitimate value or document or even one single hour of work the Bidens have provided their business partners. Nothing. What is apparent after over a year of investigation is that the Bidens do not work in any traditional sense of the word. They do not work as consultants or lawyers or advisors. The Bidens don't sell a product or service or a set of skills. The Bidens sell Joe Biden. That is their business. For months, we have heard Democrats desperately proclaiming that witnesses have told this committee that Joe Biden had no involvement in his family's business dealings. But where are those witnesses today? It's telling. Democrats haven't invited one of these witnesses to today's hearing. That's because they know their testimonies would not withstand public scrutiny. Democrats have relied on these witnesses' opening statements and have willfully turned a blind eye to the facts that have come out of in these interviews once the witnesses were questioned about our record of evidence. Democrats now must rely on bringing in a distraction witness to talk about nonsense. And who can't talk about any of the facts brought by today's witnesses who worked with the Bidens? Now, President Biden cannot control his adult son. He cannot control his brother, his sister-in-law, or his nine family members who have received money from these transactions. All President Biden can do is control his own actions. And that is what we are here today to discuss with the witnesses. Because in the course of this investigation, we have learned that Joe Biden has taken action after action to further his family's plans to get rich. 
He shows up to meetings, gets on phone calls, shakes hands and tells people to, quote, look after my family. He goes to dinners with foreign oligarchs and a Ukrainian executive paying his son millions of dollars. He gets paid with money from Chinese businessmen who he has meetings with and tells other business associates he'll see what he can do to help their situations. He writes letters of recommendation for foreign business associates' children. The scam is simple. The Biden family promises they can make a foreign partner's problems go away by engaging the U.S. government. The problems can be anything. A Ukrainian corruption investigation, moving Russian money to the United States, a Romanian criminal prosecution, access for China to American energy sources. Joe shows up, shakes a few hands in front of his son, and says, quote, take care of my boy, or something similar. And the money flows to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. It's done over and over again. The Biden family promises Joe's power. Joe Biden shows up and millions of dollars come into the Biden's pockets. Joe Biden is the family's closer. How could he not be? The Bidens aren't doing any other work for these foreign companies that would warrant tens of millions of dollars. There are only two explanations for this. The first is that Joe Biden knows exactly what he's doing and knows a handshake, a wink, and a smile is enough for him to maintain, as Jim Biden famously calls it, plausible deniability. Or Joe Biden is being led around by his family and has no idea who he's meeting with or what message he is sending and is truly an elderly man with a poor memory. There's no other explanation. Either Joe Biden is complicit or Joe Biden is incompetent. Since becoming chairman of this committee in January 2023, I've promised the investigation into the Biden family's influence peddling would be based on bank records, witness terror testimony, and verifiable facts. After years of Democrats using this committee as a mouthpiece for every conspiracy theory they could find, like the Russian collusion hoax, mm -hmm. under my leadership, the committee has returned to real investigations. If Democrats want to spend another Russian hoax, I will ask them to answer one question. What services did the Bidens provide to earn them and their business associates over $24 million. What did they do for the money? Democrats have the same bank records as we do, and bank records do not lie. The witnesses today are here to talk about Joe Biden. Republicans are here to talk about Joe Biden. If Democrats wish to spend their time beclowning themselves with another Russian collusion hoax for the sake of protecting President Biden, they can do so. As I said, I would have invited Hunter Biden here today to sit alongside his business associates and provide his side of the story. Hunter, Hunter Biden demanded a public hearing. I've given him one. Maybe he will show up. He has said he isn't, but he loves saying one thing and doing another. At some point, Hunter Biden saying one thing and doing another begins to re reflect poorly on his ability to tell the truth at all. But this hearing is not about Hunter Biden. This investigation is not about Hunter Biden. It's about Joe Biden and the lies he continues to tell the American people. With that, I yield to <coughs> Ranking Member Smith, or Chairman Smith. Thank you, Chairman Comer and Ranking Member Raskin. From the beginning of this investigation, we've made clear that we will follow the facts wherever they lead. The facts have led us to two conclusions. One, the Biden family has for years traded on Joe Biden's name in order to rake in millions of dollars often doing so with his direct knowledge and clear involvement. Two, President Biden has been continually dishonest with the American people about his knowledge of his family's business dealings. We have testimony from multiple witnesses that Joe Biden was the brand. He knew what his son and brother were doing and did nothing to stop it. That alone makes him complicit in a scheme to make money off of his public service. But he was not just complicit. He was, as one of today's witnesses, has testified, an enabler of this activity. The evidence of the two IRS whistleblowers who came to the Ways and Means Committee has been affirmed by volumes of material provided to Congress by the testimony of others and even by the Department of Justice who finally brought charges against Hunter Biden that mirror those called for by the IRS investigators. The evidence obtained shows that one, Joe Biden met with his son's business partners on multiple occasions. He used an alias to exchange dozens of emails with his son's bookkeeper. 
He took official government action that suspiciously coincided with those meetings and correspondence. The connections between Joe Biden and his son's business practices extended even to the Biden 2020 campaign. At the height of the Democrat primary, Kevin Morris, a Hollywood lawyer who met Hunter Biden at a Joe Biden campaign fundraiser, paid off Hunter Biden's tax liabilities because there was, in his words, quote, risk personally and politically, if that matter was not swept under the rug. Investigators that were interested in pursuing a potential criminal campaign violation were told to stand down. The Biden family relied on the Biden brand so much that evidence has revealed that Hunter Biden believed that, quote, all this stuff, meaning his legal troubles, would all go away when his dad became president. Why did he believe that? Because for years, the Biden family has personally benefited from Joe Biden's position of power. Joe Biden knew this. He did nothing to stop it, and he lied about it. I yield to Jim Jordan, Chairman Jordan. Uh, I thank the gentleman. Who planted the pipe bombs on January 6th? Nobody seems to know. Who leaked the Dobbs draft opinion? You know, the leak that led to an assassination attempt on Justice Kavanaugh. How about this one? Who left cocaine at the White House? Biden administration doesn't seem to have time to answer these questions. They're too busy investigating parents at school board meetings, labeling Catholics extremists, retaliating against whistleblowers. They're too busy putting together a sweetheart deal for Hunter Biden, a deal that got laughed out of court. And oh, the guy who put together the deal that got laughed out of court, that's the guy they name special counsel. You know what Democrats do have time for? Going after President Trump. They've been doing it for eight years. They spied on his campaign. Then it was the Mueller investigation, 19 lawyers, 40 agents, $30 million, and found nothing. Then it was impeachment. Then it was raid his home. Then it was a special counsel. Then it was the 14th Amendment. The party of democracy said, we're going to keep the guy off the ballot who's leading in every single poll. The ranking member said that President Trump should be disqualified from even running for office. Thank goodness we have a Supreme Court who disagreed with the ranking member and the Democrats. Nine to zero. Not five, four, not six, three, not seven, two, not eight, one, nine to zero. They disagreed. Now Democrats say, how dare, how dare Republicans investigate Joe Biden? How dare they look into the money the business and the brand. Millions of dollars, as the chairman said, millions of dollars from foreign entities run through 20 different companies for what? Wasn't, I mean, 20 different companies for what? Devin Archer told us what it was for. Access to the brand. And the brand was Joe Biden. The brand that played rounds of golf, took calls and meetings, attended lunches and dinners with Hunter Biden and his business partners. The brand that said... The brand that conditioned $1 million, $1 billion of American tax money on the firing of the prosecutor pressuring the company Hunter Biden sat on the board of. And oh, by the way, was getting paid a million bucks a year. Today, we're going to learn more about that brand. We're going to learn more about what Mr. Galanis called the Biden lift. We'll learn about the plausible deniability that Jim Biden talked to Mr. Bobolinsky about. And we'll hear about the statement, the rule that governed how the business operated around Joe Biden. The rule that said, say it, forget it, write it, regret it. So I want to thank our witnesses for coming here today. They, like the whistleblowers who came to the Ways and Means Committee, are doing it simply because they want the American people to have the truth. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes the ranking member for 12 minutes for his opening statement. Mr. Chairman, thank you very kindly. With any luck, today marks the end of perhaps the most spectacular failure in the history of congressional investigations, the effort to find a high crime or misdemeanor committed by Joe Biden and then to impeach him for it. In prior hilarious episodes of this long-running madcap series, America got to see the following. One, nearly 20 fact witnesses who could not identify a single act of wrongdoing by President Biden much less a high crime and misdemeanor, and who overwhelmingly testified that Biden was not involved in any of his family's business adventures. 
Two, three expert witnesses called by the majority itself who said nothing that they had seen in the tens of thousands of pages of documents uh, adduced by the majority even remotely approached the level of a high crime and misdemeanor. Bank records would show exactly what all the witnesses told us, that Joe Biden was not involved in his family members' businesses. Repeated voyeuristic displays of pornographic images by the majority completely irrelevant to any conceivable legislative or investigative purpose. A star witness, Gao Luft, who turned out to be a Chinese agent and an illegal arms trafficker on the run from American justice. And the key piece of evidence, which launched the entire zany goose chase, an FD-1023 form in which the FBI duly recorded a completely fictional tip about a $5 million bribe to Vice President Biden peddled by Alex Smirnoff, who has been criminally indicted by a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney, Special Counsel David Weiss, for felony counts of systematically lying to the FBI in constructing a false record about Joe Biden and now sits in jail in California as a flight risk while the world studies his long-standing and extensive ties to Russian intelligence. Today, the good chairman and his ace mega detectives have finally jumped the shark. The comedy of errors comes crashing to an end as House Republicans in more than a dozen Biden districts beg for mercy and the committee throws a flabby Hail Mary pass three weeks after the Super Bowl's over. So today, we revisit the fruitless testimony of two more fading star witnesses who have failed to testify to any presidential wrongdoing, much less evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors. Both of the majority witnesses are frustrated would-be business partners of Hunter Biden, who tried to leverage the Biden name, or the Biden brand, as they keep calling it. But they never got any business off the ground for reasons that will become painfully obvious to anyone watching the proceedings today. Even Hunter Biden, laboring at the time under a serious substance abuse addiction, could tell these were not the type of people he should be doing business with. So rather than representing the Biden brand, which was their ardent wish, they now show up today as loyal servants of Trump world, each of them proudly represented by their very own former Trump White House attorney. The first is Mr. Bobolinsky, the bitterly disappointed wannabe Hunter business partner whose famously litigious history includes unsuccessfully suing his own dying father's charity for nearly a million dollars. And just last month, suing Cassidy Hutchinson for $10 million after she reported that Mr. Bobolinsky wearing a ski mask met with Mark Meadows, which Ms. Hutchison is now backed up with actual documentary photographic evidence, something in very short supply in this investigation. Mr. Bobolinsky made his hazy allegations against the Bidens public for the first time at a press conference choreographed by the Trump for President campaign, which provided him a venue, a gaggle of journalists, and even a dress shirt that they went out and bought for him uh, to wear to the event. Hours later, Mr. Bobolinsky joined the second 2020 presidential debate as Donald Trump's personal guest, where he was seated with Kid Rock and Mark Meadows. The other star witness, Mr. Galanis, who I believe is appearing by Zoom today, is a serial fraudster and convicted con man, a term I would charitably not use on a witness, except it was explicitly bestowed upon him by not one, but two different U.S. federal district court judges, including the one who sentenced him to over 15 years in prison for defrauding union pension funds, a Native American tribe, and scores of innocent investors. Mr. Galanis was sentenced to pay restitution of over $80 million dollars to his victims. That's a lot of money. That's what Donald Trump was sentenced to pay uh, E. Jean Carroll for in that civil litigation. The very first record of Mr. Galanis' claims against the Biden family appeared, check this out, in the clemency petition that he sent from prison to President Trump. Um, but the key point is this. Even if we were to believe every single word offered by these utterly compromised and biased witnesses, Mr. Bobolinsky, Mr. Galanis, their allegations don't identify any wrongdoing 
much less an impeachable offense by President Biden. With the impeachment bus running on empty, our GEO colleagues now are apparently preparing to save face by ending the impeachment farce with criminal referrals. But criminal referrals require evidence of crimes. And the only crimes we have seen are those of the GOP's own star witnesses, like Russian asset Alex Smirnoff, Chinese agent Gal Luft, Devin Archer, and Jason Galanis. The minority witness today, our witness, Lev Parnas, casts a piercing light on what's really taking place here. And Mr. Parnas has reason to know. He, too, used to be a mega sycophant peddling lies and disinformation to smear Joe Biden. Today, he joins a long line of self-exiles from Trump world who could no longer stomach all the corruption and deceit. People like Cassidy Hutchinson, people like Michael Cohen, Sarah Matthews, Alyssa Griffin, General James Mattis, Mattis, the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, General John Kelly, and now Vice President Mike Pence, who refuses to endorse for president the man he served with. But we do have loyal sycophants still in the room, and one day I look forward to hearing their testimony about how they got sunk into this religious cult. Mr. Parnas wrote Chairman Comer and me a remarkable letter on July 23rd, 2023. This is the first time I'm meeting him today. He was Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man, his globetrotting business partner and language interpreter in the mission to manufacture Ukraine and Burisma-related dirt and smears against Joe Biden in 2018 and 2019. He spent all of his time traveling around the world trying to stage uh, evidence against Joe Biden. In his letter, Parnas explains that the desperate search to find evidence of any kind of Biden corruption was a complete and total bust because there was no evidence to find. He wrote to tell us that not only is there no evidence in Ukraine that Joe Biden did anything improper, but more darkly, the manic search for a smoking gun against Biden became a mission to invent and concoct evidence out of thin air with the active help of Russian intelligence assets and agents. A man, I'm getting to Russia, you haven't heard anything yet, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a man who has reckoned with his own moral descent into Trump world, Lev Parnas is ashamed of what he did to serve the interests of Russian propaganda and Putin's lies. And he wants America to know the truth. He can explain how the Russian stimulated conspiracy theories and lies that he promoted with Rudy Giuliani live on in the tiresome fabrication spread by Alex Smirnoff and now repeated by this committee like Pavlov's dog. At every turn, my colleagues cry Russia hoax even in the face of repeated warnings from Donald Trump's own Treasury Secretary and Secretary of State, from the intelligence community, from Robert Mueller, and most recently from Special Counsel Weiss, who was named to office by Donald Trump. As Secretary Mnuchin stated, quote, Russian disinformation campaigns targeting American citizens are a threat to our democracy. That's Secretary Mnuchin, someone that you guys usually defend, but my GOP colleagues continue to cry Russia hoax like cult members selling flowers at the airport. Our colleagues are the ones loyally amplifying the actual Russian hoax. Not the Russia hoax, the Russian hoax. The one that Giuliani and Trump and Smirnoff have eagerly, eagerly adopted from Putin and his agents. They participate in this hoax while they shamefully block $60 billion in military assistance to President Zelensky and the besieged Ukrainian people, five years after Trump and Giuliani tried to shake President Zelensky down for counterfeit dirt on Joe Biden. And while they continue to parrot these transparent Russian lies, Vladimir Putin wages his bloody aggressive war on Ukraine filled with atrocities like the mass kidnapping of children and the rape and slaughter of civilians. The MAGA rights wholesale adoption 
of this Russian hoax and their sellout of the Ukrainian people by the mega right is an historic betrayal of democracy, freedom, and the rule of law. But the defense of democracy begins with fidelity to the truth and the oversight Democrats, America's truth squad against this disinformation is here today to set the record straight. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. I would now like to introduce our witnesses. Mr. Tony Bobulinski. Mr. Bobulinski was a business partner of Hunter Biden in a joint venture between a Chinese energy entity, CEFC. Mr. Bobulinski sat for a transcribed interview with the committee on February 13, 2024. Mr. Lev Parnas. Mr. Parnas uh, was not a business associate of the Biden family. Uh, Mr. Parnas is an entrepreneur, a political activist, and an author. And Mr. Jason Galanis. Mr. Galanis was a business partner of Hunter Biden. Mr. Galanis sat for a transcribed interview with this committee on February 23, 2024. We asked the Bureau of Prisons to make him available in person today. They would only provide Mr. Galanis for virtual testimony. Notably, Mr. Galanis applied for CARES Act home confinement and after a lengthy approval process was approved for home confinement on June 9th, 2023. On June 12th, 2023, I issued a subpoena to Devin Archer for testimony. On the following day, June 13th, 2023, Mr. Galanis' approval was reversed as a result of Department of Justice's intervention. So Mr. Galanis has remained in a federal prison facility. He is currently in Montgomery, Alabama. Mr. Galanis, can you please state for the record who else is in the room with you? Uh, yes, Chairman Coleman. Uh, uh, my counsel and uh, advisor, uh, uh, Mark uh, Paletta uh, and Nicholas Wise. Thank you. Pursuant to Committee Rule 9G, the witnesses will please stand and raise the right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Let the record show that the witnesses all answered in the affirmative. Thank you. You all may be seated. We appreciate you all being here today and look forward to your testimony. Let me remind the witnesses that we have read your written statements, and they will appear in full in the hearing record. Please limit your oral statements to five minutes. As a reminder, please press the button on the microphone in front of you so that it is on and members can hear you. When you begin to speak, the light in front of you will turn green. After four minutes, the light will turn yellow. And when the red light comes on, your five minutes has expired, and we would ask that you would please uh, wrap it up as quickly as possible. I now recognize Mr. Bobulinski for his opening statement. Should I allow Hunter to give his opening statement first? Well, uh, doesn't appear Mr. Biden showed up for his public hearing, so we'll recognize you, Mr. Bobulinski. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, ranking members, and members of Congress, good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you and present my truthful testimony to the American people. I sit here today under oath for one reason and one reason only. The American people deserve to hear the truth. Though the truth involving the deep corruption of the Biden family, including the malfeasance of the sitting president of the United States, might be raw and unpleasant, the American people must hear it. You're presented here today with two narratives in this investigation. A false one being pushed by Joe Biden, a serial liar and fabulous, now under this impeachment investigation for public corruption. His brother, Jim Biden, a 75-year-old man who can't keep his lies straight, including under oath. And his son, Hunter Biden, a chronic drug addict facing two indictments with 12 counts. You also have before you the truth, confirmed by multiple Biden family business partners over many years and backed up by mountains of irrefutable evidence, including text messages, emails, documents, recordings. I am the only Biden family business partner with an impeccable military record. I'm grateful that this country has given me the freedom to be successful. I worked hard to become independently wealthy. I've taken several businesses public, sold multiple businesses to some of the world's best private equity firms. In fact, my business success is why they sought me out. However, what they have done is repugnant to me. I am here today because I'm a patriot and I'm a truth teller. We keep hearing from certain corners that our democracy is at risk and democracy is on the ballot in 24. Yet the same people preaching this mantra know better. They continue to lie directly to the American people without hesitation and remorse. 
Rep. Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers, and Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponizes letters to Congress to try to smear my name Mr. and Chairman. state the cold hard facts M Mr. Chairman. in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client Wait. and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer in the United States Navy at Navy's elite Naval Nuclear Power Training Command. I later served as the, chief's, uh, the command's chief technology officer. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the... Okay. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah. But please, Mr. Bobolitsky, please. Okay. Come to order. Uh, Mr. Bobolitsky, Mr. Bobolitsky, please okay. proceed. Okay. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the minority. Okay. Can well, I Mr. Chairman, it saved his time, but he called members of this committee liars, and I just want to know whether the order and decorum requirements of House Rule 11 apply to witnesses appearing before the committee. Uh, do, do the, does it apply or does it not? Should I address? I, I don't. There's hard li there's decorum from the members. We've asked for that. There's no language that I'm aware of pertaining to a witness. Yeah. Thank you. So, so uh, don't uh, make sure we didn't uh, waste any of his time on the opening statement. Mr. Bobolinsky, I'm sorry for the disruption. Please continue your opening yeah, statement. I think uh, you, Mr. Raskin, used we'll, we'll make sure it's right. We'll oh, make okay, sure. Okay, great. I just want to restate, uh, make sure the American people hear all these facts. Abby Lowell weaponizes letters to Congress to try to smear my name and misstate the cold hard facts in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Um, prior to my successful business career, I was an officer for over six years in the United States Navy's elite Naval Nuclear Power Training Command as a decorated master training specialist. I later served as the commander's chief technology officer, where I held a few security clearance from the Department of Energy and the NSA. When I left Nuclear Power Training Command, I was the number one ranked direct input officer in the entire command. And then I jumped into the business world and public markets. While I have made a few contributions over the years to Democrats, such as Representative Ro Khanna, I don't see him, but I hope he shows up today. Um, he sits on the Democratic side of the Oversight Committee. I'm not a political person. I, came, I come from a family with a long history of distinguished service in our nation's military, including my father, both of my grandfathers, and my brother, all of whom were willing to sacrifice their lives for this great country. My sister serves our military vets for two decades at the Veterans Administration. We've lived our life as a family in service to this great country. I hope the American people will pay a cl close attention to this hearing. I also hope they will understand that some members of this committee will engage in absurd attacks and efforts to, to try to deflect attention from the facts. And I, will and I will present today by questioning my integrity and my patriotic duty. You may see me speak passionately at this hearing, but for good reason. Not only was I willing to die for this country, every single male member of my immediate family was willing to die for this country. I want to be crystal clear. From my direct personal experience and what I've subsequently come to learn, it is clear to me that Joe Biden was the brand being sold by the fam Biden family. His family's foreign influence peddling operation from China to Ukraine and elsewhere sold out to foreign actors who are seeking to gain influence and access to Joe Biden and the United States government. Joe Biden was more than a participant in and a beneficiary of his family's business. He was an active, aware enabler who met with business associates such as myself to further the business, despite being buffered by a complex scheme to maintain plausible deniability. I ask this big question. If there's no evidence of corruption here today, if Joe's conduct and the conduct of his family were fully legal and proper, then why are they so dishonest about it? Not just slight misrepresentations of fact, but deep untruths about the entire corrupt enterprise. Hunter Biden gave his transcribed interview on February 28th and lied throughout his testimony. Here's just one egregious example of Hunter's perjury. 
He lied to the committee um, on important details concerning his money demands and threats to CFC in text messages on July 30th and 31st, 2017. He leveraged his father's presence next to him in that infamous text to strong on CFC to paying Hunter immediately. Jim Biden also lied extensively throughout his transcribed interview on February 21st and perjured himself. An example of that, on page 100 of his transcript, Jim is asked specifically, do you recall having a meeting with Hunter Biden, Tony Bobulinski, and Joe Biden? Jim's response, absolutely not. The committee was so shocked by his perjury that they asked him the same question multiple times, each time he denied meeting with me and Joe Biden. After the committee showed him text messages confirming that I met with Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and Jim Biden at the Beverly Hilton in May 2017, Jim Biden, with a former U.S. attorney lawyer sitting next to him, still denied that meeting took place. Hunter Biden, in his own transcribed interview, confirmed that that meeting took place. Hunter confirmed his uncle perjured himself in front of this committee. I'm simply here to tell the truth to the American people, and I hope each and every one of you, congressmen and women, give me the opportunity to do that instead of focusing on Russia or smearing my family's name or focusing on facts that are irrelevant today. I yield back. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Uh, parliamentary inquiry? Yes. Uh, just two points. One is, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Bobulinski went over two minutes, 14 seconds. I hope the same courtesy we, will be We will give Mr. Mr. Parnas equal time. Thank you. And uh, secondly, um, I see that we now have a witness appearing remotely, and I thought that witnesses were required to appear in person under the rules adopted by the majority at the beginning of the Congress. Um, and do, do we have a new practice with respect to that rule? Because I know that members on our, our side were denied the ability to participate in hearings that were conducted in Florida and Mississippi and Alabama. We wanted to participate by Zoom. So I hope... It, and I'll answer that. It requires yeah. to, to be able to testify remotely requires a letter from me and uh, uh, to the an approval from the majority leader, which we have. And I'll enter that Good. Letter, we, letter into the record without I, objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope we'll extend the same courtesy to members of this committee when they can't get to a hearing as in Mississippi or Florida. Thank you much. Mr. Chairman, parliamentary Ch inquiry? State your point. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bobulinski just referred to uh, text messages um, that I believe he is referring to photos of a this, blackberry. This, what's, your, what's your parliamentary inquiry? State your parliamentary inquiry because we've got a very important hearing here and we don't have time for stunts. What's your parliamentary inquiry? It's Mr. not a Goldman? stunt. It's, um, I'm, I'm simply asking that Mr. Uh, Bob... You don't have a parliamentary inquiry. Chair now recognizes Mr. Parnas for Mr. equal Chairman, time. The committee Mr. Committee Mr. Chairman, possession can... Chair recognizes Mr. That, Mr. Parnas. Does the, chairman, does the committee have the text messages that Mr. Bob... Mr. Chairman, we don't have time for games right, by listen, Democrats today. We have, we have important witnesses here. This is a credible. I'm asking a question about the investigation. You witnesses. asked for a parliamentary inquiry. You will have five minutes whenever Jamie Yaskins gives you, uh, tells me it's your time to speak. Mr. Parnas, the chair recognizes you for equal time that Mr. Bobulinski had, which was seven minutes. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Honorable members of Congress, Chairman Comer, Ranking Member Raskin, and members of the Oversight Committee. I am humbled and thankful before you to show up before you today. I came to the United States from Odessa, Ukraine in 1976 when it was still the so former Soviet Union. My mother and father and sister and I had left the Soviet Union escaping anti-Semitism and persecution. While in Rome and right en route to Israel, my sister and I won the most important opportunity that we have ever been given. We won a U.S. green card lottery. My family came here with literally no more than shirts on our back and the hopes of rebuilding our lives in the land of freedom. I say this to you because I love this country. From shortly after my arrest on October 9, 2019 to now, I have been trying to share the irrefutable truth with you. The American people have been lied to by Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and various cohorts of individuals in government and media positions. They created falsehoods to serve their own interests, knowing it would undermine the strength of our nation. From November 2018 to October 2019, I was a key participant and a witness to numerous efforts to prove that Joe and Hunter Biden were linked to corruption in Ukraine. 
Rudy Giuliani, on behalf of then President Donald Trump, tasked me with a mission to travel the globe, finding dirt on the Bidens so that an array of networks could spread misinformation about them, thus securing the 2020 election for Donald J. Trump. Ironically, when I was arrested, my original indictment linked me to an individual referred to as unindicted co-conspirator one. We now know this individual to be Congressman Pete Sessions, who sits on this very committee today. Today, I ask you to consider the following. In nearly a year traveling the world and interviewing officials in different countries, I found precisely zero evidence of the Biden's corruption in Ukraine. No credible source has ever provided proof of criminal activity, not the FBI, CIA, nor the NSA. No respectable Ukrainian official has ever said that the Biden did, did anything illegal, including former President Poroshenko and former Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko. Even when CEO of Burisma, Mykola Zlachevsky, was offered a deal by Rudy Giuliani in exchange for information on the Bidens, he provided none, because there is none. The only information ever pushed on the Bidens in Ukraine has come from one source, and one source only, Russia and Russian agents. The impeachment proceedings that bring us here now are predicated on false information spread by the Kremlin. Everyone involved knew they were sharing lies. From Trump and Giuliani's shadow diplomacy, through my missions to Ukraine and elsewhere, to members of a BLT team, a group convened for the sole purpose of investigating and damaging the Bidens. <coughs> Bidens. Everything was for the ultimate benefit of Donald Trump and thereby Vladimir Putin. Because the team's investigations were centered around Biden and Ukraine, I was designated the point person in every matter they pursued. That is how that is how I know with certainty that these Biden stories are untrue then and are untrue now. Excuse? Congressman Pete Sessions, then Congressman Devin Nunes, Senator Ron Johnson, and many others understood they were pushing a false narrative. The same goes for John Solomon, Sean Hannity, and media personnel, particularly at Fox News, who used this narrative to manipulate the public ahead of the 2020 elections. Sadly, they are still doing this today as we approach the 2024 elections. We cannot separate this conspiracy from the Russian-Ukraine war because Trump has no intention to keep aiding Ukraine. Without the support of the United States and NATO, millions in Ukraine will suffer and die. If we allow Russia to defeat Ukraine, eventually that suffering will reach American shores. Today, I admit my own wrongdoings. I have been a convicted federal election campaign and fraud crimes and served my sentence. I do not hide that from reality. It is part of my truth. Despite rigorous attempts by those in power to silence me, I will be silenced no longer. Thank you to the committee for allowing me to speak. I look forward to answering any and all of your questions. Thank you. Chair now recognizes Mr. Galanis for his opening statement. Uh, Chairman Gomer, Ranking Member Raskin, and members of the committee, uh, my name is Jason Galanis. I was a business partner of Hunter Biden and Devin Archer, among others, during the years of 2014 and 2015. Our business included the acquisition of 85-year-old Wall Street firm Burnham & Company, the $1.5 billion surviving division of Drexel Burnham Lambert. Our objective was to build a diversified private equity platform, which would be anchored by a globally known Wall Street brand together with a globally known political name, Biden. Our goal, that is Hunter Biden, Devin Archer, and me, was to make billions, not millions. The entire value out of Hunter Biden to our business was his family name and his access to his father, Vice President Joe Biden. In 2014, we believed that burden, the burden of enterprise would be significantly enhanced by forming a partnership with Harvest Fund Management, a $300 billion Chinese financial service company closely connected to the Chinese Communist Party. This effort was led by Hunter Biden's contact with Henry Zhao, the Harvest Chairman. Mr. Zhao was interested in this partnership because of the game-changing value add of the Biden family, including Joe Biden, who was to be a member of the Burden Harvest team post-Vice Presidency. My lawyers provided the committee a draft of an email dated August 23rd, 2014, drafted for Hunter Biden that reflects this understanding. It states, and I quote, Michael, <clears throat> please also remind Henry Zhao of our conversation about a board seat for a certain relation of mine. Devin and I golfed with that relation earlier this week, and we discussed this very idea. 
And as always, he remains very, very keen on the opportunity, end quote. I'm certain that this phrase, <clears throat> that this phrase, a certain relation of mine, refers to Vice President Biden. Devin told me about this golf course conversation shortly after it happened. Ultimately, this paragraph was deleted from the final version, with Hunter following our general rule of thumb on business deals, say it, forget it, write it, regret it. Further to that, I recall being with Hunter Biden and Devin Archer at the Peninsula Bar in New York, where Hunter took a call from his father and told him things were going well with Henry's Allen Harvest, and that he might need a little help getting across the finish line. <clears throat> it was not the only time I heard Hunter speak with his father for business reasons. I was present when Hunter called his father on May 4th, 2014, on a cell phone, put it on speaker mode to have him say hello to Yelena Baterina, a Russian oligarch and an investor in Rosemont Projects, and her husband, Yuri Luskov, the former mayor of Moscow. Devin Archer was also there. Hunter said, quote, well, I'm, I'm here with our friends. I told, you we're, I told you we're coming to town, and we wanted to say hello. The vice president said hello, some pleasantries, and then I hope you had safe travels, and then said, quote, okay, be, you be good to my boy. Hunter responded by saying, everything is good, and we are moving ahead. The vice president said something about, quote, being helpful, and Hunter ended the call by saying he was going to call his father later. Before this call, Hunter sat next to Elena Baderina at a table, and I heard him speaking on business matters generally. A few days after this May 4th party, an email my lawyer provided to this committee shows that Devin had confirmed Ms. Baderina was committed to a, quote, hard order of 10 to $20 million in a burden investment banking client. In an effort to build this financial platform, I engaged in unlawful conduct. Our companies were entrusted with $11 billion of union pension money, pension fund money, whose <clears throat> trust I betrayed. I pleaded guilty. I've had eight years in federal custody to reflect on my actions. I'm profoundly sorry for committing these crimes. I deserve the lengthy sentence I received. Nevertheless, as I set out more fully in my and more, more fully in my full statement, I believe the SBNY prosecutors did not indict Hunter Biden on the same deal for political reasons, despite then available documentation that we were partners, were involved in decision-making that involved illegal self-dealing, and all of us had financially benefited from these schemes. In fact, Hunter Biden and Devin Archer's company, Rosemont Seneca Bohai, received $15 million from the tribal bonds fraudulent scheme to be invested in the Burner Group. I've offered slightest this information to the government about Hunter Biden's crimes, but the prosecutors have been uninterested. And my request for commutation I filed in DOJ in December 2020 did provide information about Hunter's culpability. The DOJ has re retaliated against me and vigorously objected to my being placed in home confinement pursuant to the CARES Act. I applied for home confinement on February 4th, 2023, and I was approved on June 9th. On June 12th, this committee issued a subpoena for Devin Archer, and the BOP reversed my approval on June 13th, with the SDNY prosecutors strongly objecting to my release. I've been appealing this reversal, and with each stage, the BOP reason for my denial has changed. During this period, the, the period beginning in January 2023, I was sexually assaulted by a member of the prison staff at FPC Pensacola. He persisted in sexually harassing me for many months thereafter. I, I had hoped to receive home confinement, which would remove me from danger. My judgment was clouded by the shame I felt for not being able to prevent the attacks. I was well aware, as, as inmates, all inmates are, that the Bureau of Prisons had a horrible record on these matters. I believe my disclosure would have made things worse for me. Unfortunately, the sexual harassment continued until early August, when the prison correctional officer's comments became more threatening. I feared for my safety. I decided to seek counseling from Chaplain Dixon the next day, on August 10, 2023. The chaplain was visibly upset by the events and asked to bring in Warden Salisbury, who quickly opened a PREA investigation, which is a reference to the Prison Rape Elimination Act passed by Congress. After further debriefings, I was immediately escorted to a vehicle and driven by senior staff hours to FPC Montgomery, a separate facility. I'm grateful the committee has opened up an investigation of these matters, and I appreciate Chairman Jordan and Palmer and Subcommittee Chairman Big signing the letter. I believe I've been a victim of a pattern of retribution by the Department of Justice. 
I believe I'm putting myself at grave risk within the BOP for providing information on these matters concerning the president and his son. I've been treated professionally at Montgomery. I want to thank case manager coordinator Anthony Barnes and warden Randy Keyes for their help in facilitating access to my attorney prior to this interview. Thank you, Mr. Galanis, and I want to thank all the witnesses again for, for being here today. Uh, we will now begin the questions, and I want to remind members on both sides of the aisle, each member has five minutes. I'm going to adhere to that uh, and uh, hit the gavel. If the question has been asked, then uh, we'll allow the witnesses time to respond. But we are going to try to get in a lot of questions uh, from a lot of members, and I will begin the questioning followed by Ranking Member Raskins. Uh, again, Mr. Bobulinski, thank you for your service to our country, your military service. Appreciate you being here. Uh, during the 118th Congress, this committee is investigating Joe Biden's involvement in his family's influence peddling schemes around the world. So let's start with that. Mr. Bobulinski, was Joe Biden involved with any of your business dealings with Hunter Biden and James Biden? Was Joe Biden involved in his family's attempts to sell their access to him? You set out a form, you set out a form uh, uh, to form a legitimate business. You set out to form a legitimate business with the Bidens. Did you come to find out that the Biden family had no interest in doing real business? I did. Mr. Galanis, are you aware of any times Hunter Biden used Joe Biden <laughs> with Joe Biden's knowledge to benefit their business associates? Yes. Which business associates? Uh, Elena Baterina, Russian oligarch, testified Russian. about Russian, Chinese, uh, um, Chinese fund manager, um, Henry Zhao, and uh, Nikolai Klochevsky, a uh, Ukrainian oligarch, uh, oil and gas oligarch. Okay. Well, now that we've established that Joe Biden was involved in his family's business dealings, I'd like to turn to the financial records we've subpoenaed. One major point my Democrat colleagues downplay is how much money the Bidens accumulated from foreign business ventures in such a short period of time. We have over $24 million to the Biden family and their business associates from 2014, while Joe Biden was vice president, to 2019. Mr. Bobulinski, there came a time when you were attempting to raise $10 million from the Chinese to pursue an actual business deal, a real business deal. There's but it wouldn't be correct to say this was a $10 million deal, would it? Uh, what did the Bidens conceive of the business with the Chinese becoming? The Chinese were committing to uh, deploying billions of dollars in infrastructure projects here in the United States as well as around the world. Mr. Galanis, what was the financial goal you, Mr. Archer, and Hunter Biden set out to achieve? Was it millions of dollars or billions of dollars? Billions of dollars. Billions Chairman. with a B. Yes, now, billions. Now I'd like to turn to some of the statements Joe Biden has made during his presidency about the findings of this investigation. Mr. Bobulinski, Joe Biden has said he never interacted with his family's business associates. Did he meet with you? He did. In fact, are you he aware that Joe multiple, Biden also met with... I'm, I'm with, sorry, Mr. Chairman. He did yes, multiple go ahead. times. Several, okay. Are you aware that Joe Biden also met with Rob Walker, Eric Sherwin, and Devin Archer, too? I'm generally aware of it. Mr. Galanis, as you discussed earlier regarding Yelena Baterina, uh, the Russian, Russian oligarch, you were present for Hunter Biden calling his then vice president father with the Russian oligarch, Yelena Baterina, present, correct? That's correct. You also were present for Hunter Biden's conversation with his father about a board seat on a Chinese company board, is that correct? I was present for a call on Chinese transactions discussed, yes. So, Mr. Galanis, isn't it true that when Joe Biden said he didn't interact with his family's business associates, uh, that's not true, is it? I, I believe it would be misleading to the point of being um, an untruth. I want to touch on the fact about uh, the absent seat in the middle. Hunter Biden has chosen not to attend today's proceedings. I've given Mr. Biden exactly what he asked for before his deposition. It's clear that Hunter Biden knows his testimony would not withstand public scrutiny. 
Joe Biden has not been truthful about his participation in schemes to sell access and influence. And today's witnesses will show the American people a side of the story that the president and his allies on this side of the aisle are eager to hide. Mr. Bobulinski, can you tell us about your meeting at the Beverly Hilton with Joe Biden? The short version or long version? Long version. But within, within a minute. Okay. <laughs> So uh, uh, Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, and Joe Biden were in Los Angeles for a variety of business discussions. Joe was there to speak at the Milken Conference in May of 2017. I had uh, lunch with Hunter Biden at the Chateau Marmont, and he had asked me to meet with his father that night. Um, he set up a meeting at the Beverly Hilton where they hold the Milken Conference, and I got there a bit early and sat with Jim Biden, uh, Hunter Biden, and... Um, we're just talking about what we were doing with the Chinese and the legal documents I was working through. And they had sort of coached me before Joe got showed up to listen, we're gonna just keep things at a very high level. We're not gonna go into a lot of details in this meeting. And I just remember that discussion generally because it just struck me as odd, honestly. Joe wasn't in the White House then, he, 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 and um, that they were sort of framing it that way. And then Joe uh, showed up, walked through the lobby of the uh, Beverly Hilton Hotel, I stood up to shake his hand, and uh, we sat down and spent 45 minutes to an hour going through my background. You, you met with him that long? Yes, yes, yes. This wasn't a handshake, right. a two-second discussion about the weather. This was a 45-minute long, long meeting to an hour where we talked about a lot of stuff. Very good. Thank you. Chair now recognizes ranking member asking for his questions. Uh, but we're actually going to go to Mr. Garcia to begin. Great, thank you very much, uh, and thank you again. I just want to, just for the record, be very clear that in Mr. Robolinski's testimony, has, he has provided zero evidence, zero evidence of any sort of link between Hunter Biden and the president as far as it relates to the business dealings. And so once again, we're back to a hearing where no evidence is being provided of any sort of wrongdoing by the president. But I want to go that, back, that's Mr. Robolinski, actually it's my time, sir. Mr. Robolinski, I want to go back to the private deposition that we had. I was one of a handful of Democrats in that private, um, on the record, under oath conversation we had. And during that deposition, I asked you a question of which you gave a false answer to, and I want to go back to that. I asked you specifically, who got you into the presidential debate that was attended by you and others, and that, of course, was a huge moment in that campaign, and you could not recall. In fact, you said, quote, I do not recall who got me into the debate. Do you remember telling me that, sir? You were playing semantics, trying to ask me as if somebody called me directly and gave me a ticket like sir, I'm going I, to a movie Sir, theater. I asked you, let me, let me, let me, I, I asked told you, you I'm going to reclaim my time, sir. I'm going to reclaim my time. What I well, said you, was, just ask me a question, Mr. I'm Mr. reclaiming my time. Thank okay. you, sir. I actually, what I asked you was, do you recall who actually got you into the presidential debate? You actually said, I do not recall who got me into the debate. You did not remember who got you into the debate between President Biden and uh, uh, between uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. That's, of that's course, not showed, a true statement. Sir, you quoted, I don't recall who got me into the debate. It's on page 102 you, of the transcript. You, you did not sir, ask me I whether asked you I that was question. a guest of Mr. Thank Biden. Thank you, I'll reclaim my time. I'm not asking you a question right now. Oh. Thank you very much, sir. In fact, here, as was shown by um, Ranking Member Raskin, we know that you were in the debate actually sitting adjacent and next to Trump officials. When, I, when we were confronted again on this same question, Mr. Bobulinski, if you were a guest of Mr. Trump at the debate, you responded and you quoted once the Wall Street Journal called you out, quote, is the Wall Street Journal God or something? Like you act, this is some encyclopedia of fact. And you refuse to still confirm that you were a guest of Donald Trump. So I want to ask you one more time, sir. Were you a guest of Donald Trump at the presidential debate? Mr. Garcia, those were not the questions you asked me in my transcribed interview. Wow. You were trying were you, to ask uh, answer questions. the question, sir. Were you a guest of Donald a Trump? Guest of Donald Trump at the gate you, or at the debate. You were. That was obvious to everyone in the world at that point. Oh, it's interesting. You were asking me semantics. Thank you, questions. sir. I, so you were a guest That's, that you answered the question because at the time you said in the transcript under oath, I don't recall who got me into the debate. So just to be clear. So I want to I keep going. So you also call yourself you're not a political person, yet you went to a presidential debate on behalf of Donald Trump. I also want to also make it clear that you made numerous claims and allegations. You've made them today, you've made them before. And yet, even though you're not a political person, this is also another photo of you, you actually chose to show up at a press conference for Donald Trump 
prior to the, the, the debate because you're not a political person. Did you show up to a press conference for Donald Trump before the debate? I can't qualify whether it was for Donald Trump. Do you know who up, invited I you? Did, Sir, who invited up. you to the debate? Donald Trump, you said. Who invited you to the press conference? Who invited me to the, uh, my lawyers coordinated things and I showed up at a Well, sir, I will tell you, it was, Jason, it was Jason Miller, who, who, you, who uh, it's, been, it's been very clear, it's been reported, who actually worked on the, on the part of the Donald Trump campaign. Here you are at a Donald Trump press conference and you can't remember how you got to the press conference. You refuse to answer how you actually got into the Donald Trump debate with Joe Biden. Do you remember speaking at the press conference? I do very clearly. You do. Do you know who Jason Miller is, sir? I do know of him, yes. Do you know that he was a Trump campaign staffer? Mr. Garcia, you keep asking me semantical questions. You underestimate that I had three lawyers around me that were coordinating my travel, where I was going, and well, stuff sir, like I, that. Well, sir, I, you know, so interesting. Please stop. Well, I'll reclaim my time. Thank you very much. It's interesting, sir, because you show up to a pre-debate press conference. You show up to a presidential debate, both invited to by a person running for the presidency of the United States, you know the stakes are high, yet you choose, you have no idea how you got to the press conference, you don't remember how you got to the debate, and, and here you are speaking at a press conference I, of I which the national media, of which the national media, so how did you get to this, to, this press conference? I flew on a plane. Who invited you? you, you are we going in circles? Who, sir, who invited you to the press conference? Uh, my lawyers told me I was invited to come to Tennessee at that point, I was trying to get the truth and the facts out to the American people. At that moment in time, if I recall, I believe 80 million people watched that debate. And that was probably the Thank you, sir. I reclaim my time. Well, it, with that, I think it's very clear. For someone that can't remember how I got to a Donald Trump press conference or a Donald Trump debate, you're completely an uncredible witness, sir. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired. Chair now recognizes the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Jason Smith, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have, uh, we've previously heard from two IRS whistleblowers that Joe Biden was the brand being sold by his family members. One such example of this could be seen in a June 6, 2017 WhatsApp message where Hunter Biden told a business associate that he was not willing to, quote, sign over my family's brand, close quote or give them, quote, the keys to my family's only asset. Mr. Bobulinski, can you confirm that President Biden is the brand being sold by his family members? Thank you. During his deposition, Hunter Biden repeatedly testified under oath that his father was not involved in his business in any capacity, and that there wasn't even a connection between his father and his businesses. Here is just one example. Quote, I just state for the record one more time, under oath and under penalty of perjury, my father has never been involved in my business. I have never asked my father to be involved in my business. My father has never benefited from my business, and I have never asked anyone or my father to do anything for the benefit of anyone I've ever done business for, close quotes. Yet the Ways and Means Committee released a WhatsApp message that, that were provided by the IRS whistleblowers showing that Hunter Biden wrote on July 30th, 27, quote, I'm sitting here with my father and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. I'm sitting here waiting for the call with my father. Moreover, you testified that Hunter was not shy about his ability to get his father on the phone. And Devin Archer testified that there were multiple instances in which Hunter placed his dad on speakerphone. Mr. Bobulinski, was Hunter Biden telling the truth when he testified under oath that his father was never involved in any of his business dealings? No, he was not. Those are all blatant lies. We continue to hear claims that President Biden was not involved in his family's business dealings and that he did not benefit from illicit business deals. However, IRS Special Agent Joe Ziegler provided documents to the Ways and Means Committee, 327 emails, many of which involve Hunter Biden and Hunter Biden's business associates. 
Mr. Bobulinski, do you have any personal experience that leads you to believe that Joe Biden was involved with Hunter Biden's business associates and business dealings? Yes, I do. Do you want to say a few? That, uh, to outline how Joe was involved? Yeah. Yes, um, you know, different congressmen and women uh, keep trying to say that there's no evidence and use the word involved, um, it, which is a very opaque language. If Joe Biden was not involved in his son's business dealings, why after flying all the way across the country to the Milken Conference, where there is next to Davos, is probably the biggest conference in the world, why would he take 45 minutes out of his night? It wasn't a 10 a.m. meeting, it was 10.40 in the evening. He's an elderly man, flew all the way across country to sit with me for 45 minutes to an hour to discuss my background, the business we are doing with the Chinese, his family's background. Speaking of the business with the Chinese, in October 2020, Joe Biden asserted that his family had not earned money through business dealings in China. However, IRS whistleblowers shared evidence that the Biden family made at least $1.1 million from their business with China, including $100,000 in payment from CFC, China Energy, and a $1 million payment in exchange for legal services that were never provided to a CFC official, Patrick Ho. Mr. Bobulinski, do you know whether the Biden family made any money from China? They did. Millions of dollars. I think approximately eight to nine million. The Biden family has made millions of dollars from China, correct? Correct. And you said at least nine million? Yeah, I think it's actually over 10 million, but I'll leave those uh, details up to you guys. Thank you. I yield back. Gentle gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes the ranking member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Parnas, for being here today. Um, your involvement with the real Russian hoax about Joe Biden began in 2018 when, as a big donor and a big supporter of Donald Trump's, you were introduced to Rudy Giuliani, and you began working with him to dig up dirt on Joe Biden Ukraine. If you can just tell us quickly how you got involved in that. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I, I, I was a donor at the time. Uh, I became doing business with Rudy Giuliani. He, was in, he got involved in a business I was doing called Fraud Guarantee. And in the midst, we started spending a lot of time together until eventually in November of 2018, he approached me and asked me about my connections in Ukraine. After telling him about people that I knew and things that I heard, he, at that point then he wanted me to go to Ukraine to find Viktor Shokin, the prosecutor general. And basically, uh, he wanted to go from uh, his fraud guarantee to guaranteeing a fraud uh, on the American people. But after turning over every stone and going down every rabbit hole, including interviewing Viktor Shokin and Zlachevsky, the owner of Burisma, did you ever find the smoking gun or any evidence that Donald Trump was looking for to paste on Joe Biden? On the contrary, uh, Representative Raskin, uh, not only did we keep hitting dead walls and not finding the smoking gun, but we kept running into uh, sources of the information that was coming out of Russia. Uh, in fact, Joe Biden was part of a global campaign, including by the United States, to oppose corruption and to go after the corrupt forces in Ukraine. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. At what point did the campaign to dig up dirt on Biden become a campaign to spread disinformation and lies about Biden? Uh, at some point, uh, when we hit a, a few brick walls, um, all of a sudden, then I saw the shift uh, between the BLT group, which included John Solomon, the media personality, and Rudy Giuliani and other Trump lawyers, to start trying to push narratives that were we had no, uh, that were not validated. We had no way to validate them. Basically, uh, a letter would come over from somebody in Ukraine. I'd hand it over to John Solomon. Next thing you knew, you were he was on Fox TV two hours later with uh, Sean Hannity. Um. At what point did Mr. Giuliani begin working directly with Russian agents and Russian assets, individuals who would later become sanctioned by Donald Trump's own Treasury Department for spreading propaganda and disinformation against Joe Biden? Uh, it was sometime in uh, probably around May, June of 2019. W were you aware, was Mr. Giuliani aware that these people were basically just doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin? Absolutely. So he had no hesitation about spreading lies that were concocted by Russian agents? 
As long as it fit the narrative, absolutely not. How were you and Giuliani able to take these false allegations peddled by corrupt officials and Russian agents and promote and amplify them here in the United States in our political system? Weren't media groups skeptical of your claims? Um, most media groups, uh, I'd probably say all except for Fox and a few other uh, right-wing media groups, uh, didn't want to take any of the information and that ag uh, aggravated uh, Rudy Giuliani and John Solomon and other players. And the main group that was being pushed through was Fox, uh, John, Sean Hannity, and some other media personnel over there. But then there was also other people that were doing the bidding for the Russian uh, people in Congress, like Senator Ron Johnson, like Congressman Pete Sessions that sits here right now that was with me from the very beginning on this journey into finding up the digging dirt on Joe Biden. Is Putin's war on Ukraine today, which has cost hundreds of thousands of people's lives, is that part of the vaunted Russia hoax, Russia hoax? Absolutely not. Is it real? Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to ask you a more personal question, if I might, Mr. Parnas, because uh, in my several years living through this extraordinary period of American history, I've tried to ask people like Michael Cohen and Cassidy Hutchinson. I've wondered about people like General Milley, General Kelly. Why did you break with all of the deceit and corruption and lies of Donald Trump? How did you get out of that culture? I mean, it was very difficult. I actually had to hit a brick wall myself and get arrested and uh, to be able to get out of that cult. Uh, because when you're in that cult, when you're around them, you're only, you have blinders on, and you're only able to see a certain amount of information. You're only ab able to hear the certain amount of information. You're not allowed to go out of the outside out of the circle. And if you go outside of the circle, then you're not in the circle. So eventually, you brainwash yourself to believing certain things that are not true. When I was arrested and able to and had some time to reflect and really understand what was going on, I started realizing, looking back and thinking back to moments in time where I was started thinking myself that this, is, this can't be true and we, we're doing something wrong. Well, thank you for telling the truth and helping America to end this nightmare. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. Chair now recognizes the Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the ranking member just said that, Joe, quote, Joe Biden was opposed to corruption. Really? So opposed, he leveraged a billion dollars of American tax money to fire the prosecutor in Ukraine who was investigating Zolachevsky at Burisma, the, the company Hunter Biden sat on the board of. Wow. And the, and the prosecutor who replaced Shokin that Mr. Parna has referenced in his opening statement, Mr. Lutsenko, guess what he did? He took Zolachevsky off the wanted list and dropped the charges. Wow, he's really, really opposed to corruption there. Mr. Bobulinski, who's the big guy? Joe Biden. Are you sure about that? Because when Jordan, when, uh, Joe sure? Biden. You sure? I'm a thousand percent sure. Because when Hunter Biden did his deposition under oath, he said, "I don't know who it is," even though he was copied on an email that said, "H will hold 10 percent for the big guy." You sure it's the big guy? Is is Joe Biden? A thousand percent. And there's other text messages that back that up that the brave whistleblowers Shapley and Ziegler have produced. Not from my phones, not from my BlackBerry that I took screenshots from. They took them from subpoenas directly from Apple's iCloud that back up the fact that Hunter knew the big guy was Joe Biden. The big as guy is the brand. The big guy is the lift. The big guy is the one who showed up at golf outings, who did took phone calls and meetings and lunches and dinners with Hunter Biden and his business associates. Is that right? Correct. <coughs> Mr. Galanis, you referenced in your opening statement, May 4th, 2014, you were at a party at a restaurant in Brooklyn, New York. Can you tell me who else was there? Yeah, uh, the, it was a birthday party. Um, so there were more than 100 people there, but amongst them uh, was Devin Archer, myself, the host, Alex Kuklarski, uh Yelena Baterna, her husband, uh, and then Hunter Byron joined. Uh, and tell us, I, I, at, I think uh, you referenced a phone call that took place Tell us about, tell the committee what happened with that phone call. Who was, who was involved in that phone call? Uh, as, I, as I testified uh, in my opening statement, it was uh, Yelena Batarina, um, uh, her husband, myself, uh, Hunter initiating it, uh, Joe Biden on the speakerphone, and Devin Archer. So there was a little pull aside where that group of people you just described were pull aside, pulled aside, and Hunter Biden called his father's, or called the vice president. Is that accurate? That's accurate. And then tell me what, what was discussed on the call. 
Uh, discussion that testified was it was a relatively short discussion, but it was a discussion about their uh, Yelena and Yuri uh, coming to town. Um, that uh, as they as they testified specifically, they, they, they talked about uh, being good to his boy, and um, it was. Uh, uh, was, ended, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Mr. Gillespie, let me ask you this. Did you get the impression yes. Joe Biden was expecting the call? Yes. To me, it was clearly set up ahead of time. It was an arranged call. So this was, this was arranged. This was coordinated. Hunter Biden calls his father, then vice president. And I think in your deposition, you said he said this. I'm here with our friends that I told you were coming to town. So it's our friends and I told you this was going to happen, which suggests that it was most definitely coordinated. Is that accurate? That's accurate, yes. And again, Ms. Uh, can you tell us, uh, tell the committee who Ms. Batarina is again? Uh, a Russian billionaire, uh, wife of the former mayor of Moscow, served for near 20 years as the mayor. Um, she's, and she's, is, uh, she's the wealthiest woman in Russia. She'd already given money, right. she'd already given money to Hunter Biden in his business before this uh, meeting in May, and then subsequent to that meeting, she committed to give more money. Is that accurate? That's accurate. So subsequent to the coordinated call, the arranged call that Hunter Biden had with the Vice President of the United States, the wealthiest woman in Russia commits to give millions of dollars more to Hunter Biden's business. Is that all accurate, Mr. Galanis? That is accurate, yes. And again, this, this was a pull aside done at this meeting, and you think and, and you know that it was coordinated. Is this is this what they call is this what they call access to the brand, access to the Biden lift? With the, is, is that what you would describe it as, Mr. Galanis? I don't think there's any doubt that that was the intent of the call and uh, the objective, yes. And it followed the motto. It followed the 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 statement that you all agreed to say it, forget it, write it, regret it. This wasn't put in writing. This was a phone call on a speaker that was all right. There's no writing about this. It was all done that way. That was how the business operated. Is that correct, Mr. Galanis? Yes. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes who's Mr. Lynch from Massachusetts for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to make an observation here. Uh, I've been on this committee, this investigating committee, uh, for over 20 years. And as an attorney before that, I've had sufficient training and experience to say that with high confidence that when you review the entire record of evidence of these hearings going back over a year, um, you've actually provided more evidence to impeach Donald Trump for a third time than you have in so much as laying a glove on President Biden. We keep on hearing about the Biden family. When you hear someone say the Biden family, that translates into we have no evidence on the president, so we're going to use the Biden family to try to implicate uh, President Biden. But uh, by the constant bumbling and, and continually shifting arguments here, uh, you've done nothing more than exonerate uh, President Biden. Uh, we heard initially from, uh, for months, we heard about the, the Hunter Biden laptop. And, uh, you know, there, there were absolutely some embarrassing uh, photos on that and uh, some, some awful uh, information about uh, Hunter Biden's personal life. I will admit that. Um, then you bring in your own witnesses, your legal experts before this committee and have them testify. And what they said was amazing. They said there was no evidence to even suggest that there was support for articles of impeachment against the president. That was your legal experts, the Republican legal experts that said that. Then we have statements by Mr. Jordan saying that, uh, that Mr. Smirnov was the most corroborating witnesses witness that the Republicans had, the, the, the strongest witness that they had. And, of course, after that, we find out through the Trump-appointed uh, prosecutor that all of the information that Mr. Smirnov had provided was fabricated, false, and submitted by the inducement of Russian agents uh, going after President Biden and trying to undermine uh, our democratic system. 
And now we, we come to a point where, since that witness blew up, now we're, we're going to prison. And we're, we're reaching out to witnesses who have been convicted and sentenced to prison for stealing $80 million from the pensions of innocent workers. We, we can't get any lower at this point. That's your star witness. I want to I want to remind people he's sitting in prison. That's why he can't be here today. He's sitting in prison for scamming workers pensions. I mean, how low can you get? Then it's the Republicans idea that this is the best guy they can get to testify against the president. This is the best guy they can get. A guy sitting in prison who can't even be here. Mr. Parnas, uh, you've, you've talked about your own direct involvement uh, with Mr. Giuliani. And you, you said that your mission was to dig up dirt on, on President Biden. Can you, can you talk to us about uh, the coordination between yourself and Mr. Giuliani? Thank you for being here. Thank you, Congressman. So basically, Julie, it was a shadow diplomacy run by Trump and Giuliani, where Giuliani was the shadow diplomacy secretary of state. Um, I was his right hand and basically the point person in Ukraine to not only dig up, validate, search, whatever needed to be done to try to find up some corruption against Joe or Hunter Biden to be able to present. Uh, once uh, I would receive whatever information I received, I would then uh, meet with him, uh, John Solomon, other members of the team like Pete Sessions and uh, Derek Harvey or other people there to discuss what we found. At that point from there, Giuliani would then go to the White House and share with the president. And that was the line of communication. You said also in your testimony that, that members of this committee, the Republican leadership should have known, should have known before Smirnoff was, was uh, indicted that this information was fabricated about President Biden. Could you talk about that? Congressman Lynch, not that they should have known, they did know. They knew exactly what was going on. They knew that the evidence was not vetted. This information was just coming in from anywhere from left, right field, and it was being pushed straight to the halls of Congress without zero vetted, vet, vetification of it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gentlemen, Chairman, my time has expired, and I gentlemen, yield back. Gentlemen, time's expired. Before I recognize uh, Mr. Palmer, I'd like to enter into the record the testimony of Tony Bobolinsky with the committee on February 13, 2024. It corrects the record of uh, Representative Garcia's, who did not provide your entire testimony. Uh, on page 147, you told the committee about your understanding of who invited you to the events referenced by Mr. Garcia. So without objection, I'd like to enter into the record the entire uh, transcribed interview of Tony Bobolinsky. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter for the record an article from today's Daily Beast entitled Texts Reveal More Russia Ties for Key Anti-Biden Witness Bobolinsky. Okay, Daily Beast. Without objection. Chair now recognizes uh, Mr. Palmer from Alabama for five minutes. Mr. Bobolinsky, I have very limited time and I want to get through a lot of information, so please answer these questions with a yes or no, if, if you don't mind. You have met Joe Biden, uh, isn't that correct? Correct. Uh, in fact, you had a meeting with Joe Biden, isn't that correct? Two of them. One of those times was before the Milken Conference in Los Angeles, May of 2017, is that correct? It was during the Milken Conference. You provided a great deal of documentation to this committee. I want to show you some messages between you and Hunter Biden, be on the screen here, in May of 2017 before uh, you first had a meeting with Joe Biden. These are messages between you and Hunter Biden dated May 2nd, 2017. Do you recognize these? I do. At the bottom, Hunter wrote, Dad, not in now until 11, let's me and um, Jim meet at 10 at Beverly Hilton where he's staying. Jim is James Biden, President Biden's brother, is that correct? Correct. The next set of messages is, uh, if you put those on screen, is between another business associate of Hunter Biden's and you. His name is James. Do you recognize it? I do. At the top, you write, about to meet Hunter, Jim, and I guess Joe at Beverly Hilton Hotel. Joe is now President Joe Biden, is that correct? Correct. This chat between you and Joe Biden, Joe Biden's, uh, Jim Biden, uh, Joe Biden's brother, you write to Jim, great to meet you and spend some time together. Please thank Joe for this time. It was great to talk, thanks Tony B. You met with Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and Jim Biden 
the night before the Milken Conference in 2017. Is that correct? I did, and Jim Biden perjured himself by trying to deny that. Thank meeting. you, Mr. Bobolinsky. That was at the Beverly Hilton, uh, correct? Correct. You can provide more details around that meeting. What was the purpose of that meeting? I, I didn't ask for the meeting, um, so I wish Hunter Biden was sitting next to me and he could under oath describe it, but <clears throat> the only reason why I was meeting with Joe Biden <clears throat> and the only reason why I was there is because I was the CEO of the enterprise that they were putting together with the Chinese company CFC. So can you give me a little more detail about what was discussed in the meeting? Well, as I said earlier, before Joe Biden showed up, uh, Hunter and Jim Biden uh, coached me, asked, said a sort of outline that we wouldn't go into a lot of details. So through the 45 to 60 minute meeting I had with Joe Biden, I think it was about 10.40 p.m. after he flew across country, we talked about my background, my family's military background, the different business ventures I'd done around the world, the family I worked with. Joe spent time talking about his family, some of the tragedies that they had lived through. And, um, and at a high level, Hunter actually introduced me to Joe because before Joe came and sat down with us, Hunter said, hey, give me five to 10 minutes. I need to read my father in on it. So when you're referencing Joe and Hunter's father, you're referencing President Joe Biden. I am. Correct. Uh, these four images, uh, uh, well, in this message you sent to James again, you said you spent more time with Joe and Jim this morning. And to be factually correct, that's President Joe Biden and, and James Biden, his, his brother. Also saw them last night, including Hunter. These four images show a pretty clear record of your meeting with Joe Biden in, in May of 2017, Mr. Bobolinsky. Hunter Biden, during his transcribed interview, testified that the meeting did, in fact, take place. And after being asked, did Mr. Bobolinsky meet with your father during the trip, Hunter stated he met with him in the lobby of the hotel. When asked who attended the meeting, Hunter replied, my uncle and myself. But when asked whether the meeting at the Beverly Hilton between Joe Biden, Jim Biden, Hunter Biden, and Tony Bobolinsky took place, Jim Biden testified, absolutely not. These stories don't match up. Mr. Chairman, Joe Biden, uh, Jim Biden also told the committee that Joe Biden did not meet the Chinese businessman, Yu Jing Ming. Rob Walker, by known as a friendly witness committee, said the opposite. So, Mr. Chairman, it appears to me that there are material inconsistencies between the witnesses' testimony. These witnesses' statements appear to me to be irreconcilable. In short, Mr. Chairman, someone appears to be lying to the committee. The inconsistent testimony seems to come from Jim Biden, the president's brother. Uh, lying to Congress is a serious offense, Mr. Chairman, a criminal one, in fact. And if the Bidens or anyone else uh, has come before this committee and lied to this committee, I strongly encourage the committee to pursue criminal referrals uh, to the Department of Justice. One last thing that I want to ask, and uh, Mr. Bobolinsky or Mr. Galenis, have either of you heard of any offer of a pardon for anyone involved or associated with or a partner to the Biden family enterprise corruption investigation? I'm sorry, that was a question. Have, have, have I heard you heard of anyone being being suggested that a pardon might be in order for anyone associated with this enterprise? I, I have not. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Bobolinsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yield back. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just have a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you. Um, but we've heard for months now um, and seen the, the photo of that BlackBerry with the cracked screen. Does the committee have in its possession the data from Mr. Bobolinsky's phone from which he's allegedly taken these pictures? Because I think we need the data that they keep referring to. And maybe Mr. Bobolinsky could just turn it over to us where we could subpoena it today. We have the images that we have shared with you. Right, I saw the picture of the cracked Blackberry, but do we have the underlying texts that are being referred to by my friend, Mr. Palmer? Mr. Bobolinsky previously said he'd be happy to turn over his phone. We have, we have pictures of all the text message screenshots that we've provided with everyone on the committee. Okay. And all right, well, of course, he's just given us, obviously, the ones he's selected. I'm wondering whether we could get all of those texts. And I would move that the committee subpoena Mr. Bobolinsky's BlackBerry phone on which messages with Hunter Biden and the Oneida Holdings partners are saved. He stated that he's willing to provide it to the committee, so it should be rather simple. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Okay, there's a motion to subpoena 
Bob Alinsky's black Mary, the, Yeah, w with the texts that were just referenced by Mr. Palmer. Mr. Chairman, I move the Chair table. recognizes uh, Mr. Jordan. I move the table in motion. There's a motion to table. I, uh, I request a the motion is uh, to table is not debatable. Uh, as many are in Chairman. favor of tabling may signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion to table <laughs> well, is agreed to. Mr. Chairman, what we're doing is we're tabling evidence here, which you keep relying on, so I'm going to ask for a recorded vote for that. Yeah. That just makes no sense. A recorded so, vote is ordered. We'll suspend for a moment. We'll suspend for a moment. We don't, this is a uh, committee hearing. We don't have the clerk. Will somebody go find the clerk? He said it. Did he say under oath? In the. Did he say. Would. Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Minority Leader. Do you think it's possible that the witness would voluntarily just give it? But I had understood actually that Mr. Bobulinski had uh, volunteered when he was asked about this. It would simplify things if he would just turn it over to the Blackberry. Well, he did very clearly say he's happy to turn over his Blackberry to the committee. Uh, we then asked for it at the deposition. He didn't. We've asked the majority to ask you're at, for Mr. it. Mr. Goldman, you're out of order. We're in suspension here waiting for uh, the clerk to come so we can take the vote that your side of the aisle requested. Mm -hmm. I can't make this stuff up. You this can't. Is, this is Jurassic Park. Gee. Uh, Mr. Ranking Member. Ms. Ranking Member. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I solely want to underscore the importance uh, of I'm this. I'm sorry, gentlelady's out of order. You can come back here and talk to him if you want. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, we we don't even have. Uh, you, you're gonna. I said Ms. Ocasio Cortez would have to come up. You you will as well. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, uh, 
just an invitation to regular order. We have Democratic clerks who are faithful to the rule of law and could do this if, if you're waiting for clerks. And we'll all be here to watch to document their work. So, I mean, in other words, if you want to conduct the vote with the Democratic clerks, we can do it. Uh, well, the, a recorded vote is ordered. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Jordan votes yes. Mr. Turner. Mr. Gosar. Ms. Fox. Mr. Grothman. Mr. Grothman votes yes. Mr. Cloud. Mr. Cloud votes yes. Mr. Palmer. Mr. Palmer votes aye. Mr. Higgins. Mr. Higgins votes yes. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Sessions votes aye. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs votes aye. Ms. Mace. Ms. Mace votes aye. Mr. Letourner. Mr. Letourner votes aye. Mr. Fallon. Mr. Donalds. Mr. Donalds votes yes. Mr. Perry. Mr. Timmons. Mr. Timmons votes aye. Mr. Burchett. Ms. Green. Aye. Ms. Green votes aye. Ms. McLean. Ms. McLean votes aye. Ms. Bobert. Mr. Fry. Mr. Fry votes aye. Ms. Luna. Mr. Langworthy. Mr. Langworthy votes aye. Mr. Burleson. Mr. Waltz. Mr. Waltz votes aye. Mr. Raskin. No. Mr. Raskin votes no. Ms. Norton. Mr. Lynch. No. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Connolly. Nay. Mr. Connolly votes nay. Mr. Krishnamorthy. No. Mr. Krishnamorthy votes no. Mr. Khanna. Mr. Mfume. No. Mr. Mfume votes no. Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. Nay. Ms. Ocasio-Cortez votes nay. Ms. Porter. Ms. Bush. Ms. Brown. Ms. Stansbury. Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mr. Frost. Ms. Lee. Ms. Lee votes no. Mr. Kassar. Mr. Kassar votes no. Ms. Crockett. No. Ms. Crockett votes no. Mr. Goldman. No. Mr. Goldman votes no. Mr. Moskowitz. Mr. Moskowitz votes no. Ms. Tlaib. Ms. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Presley. Ms. Presley votes no. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I vote yes. And how is Mr. Burleson recorded? Mr. Chairman votes yes. Mr. Burleson is not recorded. Mr. Burleson votes yes. How is Ms. Bobert recorded? Ms. Bobert is not recorded. Ms. Bobert votes aye. How is Mr. Turner recorded? Mr. Turner is not recorded. Aye. Mr. Turner votes aye. How is Mr. Frost recorded? Mr. Frost is not recorded. Mr. Frost votes no. Ms. Porter. Uh, how is Mr. Fallon recorded? Mr. Fallon is not recorded. Mr. Fallon votes aye. How is Ms. Porter recorded? Ms. Porter is not recorded. No. 
Ms. Porter votes no. Will the clerk tally the report? Mr. Chairman, on this vote, the ayes are 21, the nays are 16. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Chair now recognizes Mr. Conley for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bobolinski, in your uh, deposition, you were asked about taking a picture of your phone, and you said, and I quote, I still have that phone. I could put that phone on this table right here, and every person in this room could look at that individual text and validate that it's a legitimate text and the date and time stamp on it. Are you willing to provide the committee voluntarily with the BlackBerry referenced and that phone? I'm willing to sit in a room with both the uh, chairman and the ranking member with my phone and their staff, and we can go through each and every text message. As I said in my interview, I had a forensics expert plug into my BlackBerry, somebody who's done extensive work for the FBI for over 10 years with an interest of pulling all the data off that phone so I could provide it to the committee. Unfortunately, right. they were using Cellbrite software, which is the software <coughs> that the FBI uses, and they were unable to pull the data off the phone. Okay. So I am more than willing to sit <coughs> in the room with the <coughs> Mr. Chairman and the ranking member and their staffs with that BlackBerry fully charged, and we can go through each and every message. If well, that, that's some progress, and I appreciate that, but you can understand, I'm sure, why the committee wants to look at prima facie evidence on its own. Well, I can't, under, rely, I, not I can't understand excuse me, why sir, you're trying to excuse me, sir, that I this have is, cooperated. Mr. Bobolinski, this is my time. Um, you can understand why we would want to look at evidence raw and un unbiased so that we can make our own determination. But thank you for your willingness to cooperate, at least at that level. Mr. Parmas, um, you observed back in 2023 in a letter you sent to Chairman Comer uh, that there were flagrant examples of Giuliani interfering in Ukrainian politics, unquote. What was, why would Giuliani be interfering in you, another country's politics? I mean, for the, uh, Giuliani would do and say whatever he needed for the purpose of getting the information he wanted to secure Donald Trump 2020 election. So uh, just a prime example of one of the things he did. Uh, he had a close rela uh, relationship with um, then a boxer, Vladimir Klitschko, who was then the mayor in Ukraine. Uh, when uh, the new uh, president came over, uh, there was rumors about maybe him not being uh, staying in office as mayor of Ukraine. Uh, Klitschko flew to New York, met with Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, and then uh, on, a, on a meeting that we had with uh, with Andre Yermak in Spain, that was relevant, had to do with uh, President Zelensky announcing the investigation into Joe and Hunter Biden. At that meeting, he also brought up the Klitschko situation and basically told. Your mark that if uh, Zelensky got rid of Klitschko, President Trump and uh, the American people would be very upset about that because we love him and he needs to be in there. So was, was Giuliani just doing this as a rogue on his own because he was a patriotic American who loved Donald Trump? Or had somebody encouraged him to engage in this kind of political interference in another country? I mean, it was, I think it was, he was encouraged by Donald Trump. And ah, personally? Personally, yes. That's your testimony? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, in your letter, you also said that Mr. Giuliani was to, quote, deliver a precise message in very strict words, unquote, uh, with respect to the, <clears throat> the administration of the then newly installed president of Ukraine, President Zelensky. What did you understand a very strict message or a message of very strict words Construed and and what was that message that you delivered that was in very strict words? Yes, Congressman. He basically told me not to be nice, to be very stern, and relay the message that unless Zelensky announced an investigation into the Bidens by Monday, this was Sunday, that uh, there would be no cooperation, no aid from uh, to Ukraine from the United States, and the pre Vice President Pence at the time would, that was scheduled to appear for the inauguration would not appear to the inauguration. That would seem to corroborate that very famous and beautiful telephone conversation between President Trump then and President Zelensky uh, 
basically saying, but I need a favor, and hinting that there'd be withholding of military aid until that favor was delivered. Is that fair? Oh, absolutely. I was a part of setting up that phone call, that famous phone call that Trump had with Zelensky. Hmm. I, uh, I think your testimony is very important, Mr. Parnas, and it's under oath. Yes, sir. I thank you. I yield back. Chair now recognizes Ms. Taylor Green from uh, Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Joe Biden continues to lie to the American people about his role in his family's businesses. In 2020, he stood up on stage of a presidential debate and told the American people that his family didn't take any money from China. That was a lie. Not only was it a lie, he knew it was a lie. He knew it because he met with his son, Hunter Biden's Chinese business associates. I want to talk about CEFC, which is the China Energy Fund Committee. Mr. Bobolinsky, who is Chairman Yi? Chairman Yi was the chairman of CEFC. Thank you. Jim Biden told the FBI and IRS that Chairman Yi was the protege of Xi Jinping, the leader of China and the Chinese Communist Party. Mr. Bobolinsky, Rob Walker told this committee that Joe Biden met Chairman Yi. Are you aware of that? Yes or no? I am now. I wasn't at the time. And Joe Biden also met with you. Is that right? Yes, he did. Twice. Who, who is Director Zhang? Director Zhang was uh, the number two at CFC. The executive director of CFC, the number two? Yeah, he was the number two executive, but really the point person that uh, I worked with and the Biden family worked with. And he's the individual that Hunter Biden was shaking down at the end of July 2017, demanding that they fund the uh, $10 million. They ultimately sent five, but $10 million directly to Hunter Biden's account, Owasco. Thank you, Mr. Bobolinsky. I want to show you a text message that Hunter Biden sent to you and his other business associates. I'm holding it right here. I'll read it to you. Hey, Tony, I have an idea. In light of the fact we are at an impasse of sorts and both James lawyers and my chairman gave an emphatic no, I think we should all meet in Romania. He's speaking about my chairman. When Hunter Biden came in for his deposition, he said that he was referring to Chairman Yi and that the rest of your group referred to Zhang as a different chairman. Does this make any sense to you? Th that's a lie. I never heard Director Zhang reference as chairman, <clears throat> and I had direct com communications with Director Zhang over WeChat, <clears throat> met him in Romania, met him in Moscow, met him around the world in New York, trying to develop this business, and he was never referred to as the chairman, first of all. Second of all, that makes absolutely no sense in the context of this message because we are discussing Oneida Holdings, LLC. Thank you. Chinese so he was not the chairman, just to clarify. Yes, Correct. Or no? Okay. So I want to show you another text. When he said his chairman, he was talking about his dad. This is from Rob Walker. It didn't seem to make much sense to Rob Walker either. So he said that when Hunter, he said this to you, when Hunter was talking about his chairman, he was talking about his dad. When Rob Walker came in to give his transcribed interview to the committee, he basically said, well, Hunter was high or confused or mad. And Rob Walker said that he was just trying to calm things down between you and Hunter. But that doesn't really answer the question about who Hunter Biden is talking about. Hunter Biden lied to this committee. So here, clearly, he says, Rob Walker's saying he's talking about his dad. So I want to be very clear. We've established that Zhang is not the chairman, obviously. Is that correct? Yes or no? Correct. Let me show you another message. This message doesn't call Zhang Chairman Zhang, does it? It just says the Chinese want to do business with the Bidens. As a matter of fact, it says, both coming to be my partner, to be partners with the Bidens, with an S. He, Zhang, is implied, has implied that the number one has made it clear and available to him. Who is the number one? The number one is Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping, the president of China? Yes or no? The leader of the Communist Party, the CCP? Yes. Is the number one? Yes, that's the number one that Hunter was referencing in that message. Now, 
let's be very clear, this was in 2017, but I would like to make it known for this committee uh, that Joe Biden told the press in 2016, as a matter of fact, he, I quote, yeah, I am. I am going to run in 2020. He told the press in 2016 that he was running for president of the United States in 2020. So here is the Bidens doing business in China in 2017 when everybody knew he was planning to be president of the United States. Do you see that to be a serious problem, Mr. Bobolinsky? I do, and I wish this committee would thoroughly investigate it and focus on all the evidence that the SDNY has on CFC. They had FISA warrants, so they were recording conversations, and I wish they disclose all that data and fact to this committee. Thank you, Mr. Bobolinsky. I yield, Mr. Chairman. Gentlelady yields back. Chair now recognize Mr. Cristomorte for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Parnas, Rudy Giuliani tasked you with, quote, a mission to travel the globe to find dirt to damage the Biden's reputation in the 2018-2019 timeframe, right? Correct, yes. And this was in an effort to secure Trump's uh, re-election re as president in 2020, right? Correct, yes. And by dirt, you mean evidence of wrongdoing or criminality, right? Yes, sir. And in your travels, you found, quote, precisely zero proof of the Biden's criminality, right? Correct. And there was no evidence of the Biden's corruption in Ukraine because, as you said, there truly was none, right? Correct, yes, sir. Now, interestingly, you have looked for dirt around the world about the Bidens, and specifically Joe Biden in particular, and you say the FBI, CIA, NSA have all failed to produce any evidence of criminal wrongdoing, right? Correct. Not only that, but former Ukrainian President Poro, Petro Poroshenko stated, quote, there's not a single word of truth to these allegations about Joe Biden, right? Absolutely, yes, sir. Now, there's a guy named Yuri Lutsenko, who's the former prosecutor general of Ukraine, and he also, quote, confirmed that nothing ties the Bidens to criminal activity in Ukraine, right? Correct. And then there's another prosecutor general named Viktor Shokin, who also said, he conceded, quote, they had, that he had no evidence that either Joe or Hunter Biden had ever interfered with Ukrainian law, right? Yes, sir. And the reason you know this is because you talked to each of these people, right? Yes, sir. And your, your job was to try to dig up dirt or manufacture dirt, right? Yes, sir. And yet we have conducted months of hearings. And because there's been no evidence of wrongdoing, you've called this whole impeachment inquiry a, quote, wild goose chase, right? Yes, sir. Now, interestingly, we've heard from the other side that, quote, the real quid pro quo wasn't, wasn't Donald Trump. It was Joe Biden when he tried to hold up foreign aid when he was vice president in exchange for firing the federal prosecutor in Ukraine that was investigating the corruption from his son. Now, you, again, looked for evidence to support this claim. There is no evidence, correct? Correct. That was false. In fact, firing the prosecutor would make it more likely that they would go after the company in question, Burisma, not less, right? Well, the ironic part is the reason why majority of the world and Ukraine and the Obama administration wanted to fire, get rid of Viktor Shokin because he was corrupt, not because he was investigating Burisma, because he was stalling investigations for UK that was looking into a $23 million they wanted to get out for, uh, 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 from Zlachevsky, and Shokin uh, stalled that investigation. So it was the logic is just the opposite of uh, what the majority claims is to be the case, yes. namely that they say that somehow Joe Biden was out to fire the prosecutor to reduce the chances of a prosecution of Burisma. But actually in firing that prosecutor, he increased the chances of in prosecuting Burisma, right? Absolutely correct, yes. So let me just talk to you about what some of the other witnesses in this impeachment inquiry have said. Jonathan Turley, the constitutional expert the Republicans brought forward said, there's no evidence of which he was aware to support impeaching the president. You agree with that, correct? 100%. Garrett Graves, a colleague of ours, said just last week, quote, have I seen anything that is impeachable? No, I haven't. You agree with that statement as well? Yes, sir. Last year, our Republican colleague, Ken Buck, who's about to retire, said he, <laughs> that evidence of wrongdoing by President Biden, quote, doesn't exist right now. It doesn't exist now. It didn't exist then, right? That's exactly true, sir. Sir, how many times have you met Donald Trump? Uh, 
well over 10 times, I'd say. I don't I'd have to count, but lots of times. Is there anything that you'd like to relate to us about your conversations with Donald Trump that would bear on the uh, conduct of these proceedings? I mean, Donald Trump was aware of everything that was going on on that day in the Red Room when we were in uh, the uh, White House after Rudy bringing Donald Trump up to speed on uh, that I could go out to Ukraine and get Victor Shokin. Donald Trump approached me, shook my head, said thank you for all that you're doing, keep up the good work, patted me on the back, took pictures, and I was off to Ukraine. To meet with Victor Shokin? To, to find Victor Shokin, to bring him back here to meet with Lindsey Graham. Got it. Thank you so much. I yield back. Thank you. Chair now recognizes Mr. Cloud from Texas for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Now, we have heard time after time uh, Biden, Joe Biden, say that he had no knowledge whatsoever about the business dealings, and that changed. He had never allegedly had a, any conversation with Hunter. Then they moved the ball to say that, well, he didn't have any business dealings, he wasn't involved, didn't have any fin financial contribution. Since then, we've uncovered about 20 shell companies, and we have bank records that bring light to that. And while we can't cover uh, all 20 shell companies in uh, five minutes, I wanted to focus on one, and that is Rosemont Seneca Bohai. Uh, Rosemont Seneca Bohai is, is interesting. Um, and uh, Devin Archer had testified, and he said this in his uh, testimony. He said, um, he said that, uh, he said that this entity, quote, was used as a common entity, owned 50-50 on a handshake deal between Devin and Hunter splitting these shares. Actually, that was your words, Mr. Galanis. Do you stand by those words? Yes, I do. And Devin Archer agreed with that. He said Hunter was a corporate secretary of RSB and had a handshake 50-50 ownership deal. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And, and primarily this company was set up uh, to uh, initially uh, as a place to hold equity from, from the equity stake of Bohai Harvest. Uh, is that correct? Um, what I was told by, uh, by, by the partners at the time was set up to do that and invest in other businesses. I think Devin Archer subsequently testified to that effect. And it, it included monies that were paid from the uh, uh, bond fraud, uh, $15 million that was wired to, to that RSB account as well. Yeah. So it conducted multiple transactions uh, as, as, as you depicted in that uh, uh, diagram. And even if this were legal and there was no impropriety here, it's, it's very concerning because this company set up to basically compete against America's energy in interests uh, at the behest of CCP. Uh, then we have uh, other flows into Rosemont Seneca Bohai from Burisma. We all know about Hunter's $1 million salary that he received for sitting on the board and providing no uh, actual function there. Uh, and, and so we have one million salary going through Rosemont Seneca to Hunter Biden. And then this is interesting. We have uh, a meeting with uh, Kazakhstani Kins Rekashev. Uh, and, and, and what gets me here is the $300 at the end of the $142,300 that goes into this. And then the next day went to a Porsche dealership uh, for a car for Hunter Biden. Now, what's interesting about all this uh, of course, is that each of these not only flowed money through the shell companies to Hunter Biden, but each of them also involved important meetings uh, with, of course, uh, President Biden. And so on December 4th, we have coffee with Jonathan Lee, who was one of the members who started uh, Bohai Harvest. And uh, he was connected with the CCP. Uh, they were having trouble getting licensed to work because, of course, the CCP has to get permission for that until Hunter flew over with, on Air Force Two with uh, Vice President Joe Biden at the time. They met with Jonathan Lee. Hunter introduced him. Uh, Joe ended up writing a, a letter of recommendation to uh, Jonathan Lee's daughter to get into college. Uh, and then we see that this relationship continues to be formed. Of course, in the Ukraine, we, we know that uh, April 16th, 2015, Joe Biden had dinner with a Burisma official at C Cafe Milano. Seemed to be a popular spot because Joe Biden also had dinner with Keynes Rekashev there. Uh, all in flow to going here. And of course, as Tony Pawlinski has pointed out several times, this all comes down to, eventually, uh, the one big guy 
who gets 10% to the big guy. And so we know that all this money flowed through this to get to Hunter, and then we know, of course, that 10% uh, went to the big guy. So, uh, Mr. Bobolinsky, does this general pattern of Hunter offering foreign in access to Joe Biden, Hunter gets paid, and then Joe gets a share of that, is that basically what the general practice across many of these shell companies were? Congressman, as I outlined, uh, the big guys, clearly Joe Biden, the details of some of those transactions I was not involved in, but that's clearly how they operated. But that's the pattern thought. that we've seen over. And Mr. Galanis, you said uh, at the beginning that Hunter didn't really provide any sort of intellectual propriety asset value or anything of, of the sort, that his entire value uh, was the brand. Is that correct? How did you state that? Yeah, we, we didn't rely on him for any work product other than um, delivering the Biden lift. The, the Biden lift. And, and one more question for you, Mr. Galanis. Did you offer to provide information on, on Hunter Biden and Devin Archer back in 2016 to prosecutors and the SEC, and what happened there? Yes, yeah, so through counsel, I had uh, offered to provide information on specifically on that to the SDNY. Um, and I subsequently also did the same thing to the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, which was interested in, subsequently was told to quash that interest. Um, I understood that to be in, a, in order from the Southern District of New York to uh, quash the SEC uh, information. Thank you. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, now recognize Mr. Goldman for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we only, I only have five minutes, Mr. Bobolinsky, so I'm going to try to move quickly, and I'd appreciate it if you just answer the questions. You testified that uh, Joe Biden was involved in your business venture related to uh, Oneida Holdings and Hunter Biden. So I want to drill down on the crux of what your testimony is. Oneida Holdings is the business venture that you are referring to, correct? When I'm referring to what? Can you can Any you ask business you did with the Bidens. Uh, my reference is the Sinohawk Holdings uh, LLC and Oneida Holdings LLC own 50% of that. Right. And Oneida Holdings was the 50% uh, that was on the American side of that Sinohawk deal, right? It was the 50% that was the Biden side of it. Some of the, you know, James Giller year is not an American, so. Sorry. Fair enough. Um, and it was a, a joint partnership memorialized in an incorporating document, correct? And it had equal shares divided among five partners. Is that right? Well, I can't. Well, Are you asking me about what you're holding up? I mean, because you're... I, you're I, sir, you're, was it an equal... Were there equal 20% shares among five partners? In, in what? Oneida Mr. Holdings. In the final signed documents? Yes. Is that what you're asking me? Yes. It is? It's not complicated. Well, it is because... Um, All right, you're just filibustering now. The answer iteration. is, you're filibustering, I get it, that there were five partners, Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, Rob Walker, James Gilear, and you. Each owned 20%. Do you well, well, they didn't each own their LLCs owned it, which is a material Do you difference. see uh, Joe Biden or an LLC related to Joe Biden on I this? Don't, I don't know if Joe Biden owned any of Jim Biden's LLC or Hunter Biden's LLC. I'll leave that up to the committee. Okay. And do you know when this agreement was entered into? Um, the poster board that you're holding up or the actual legal document that was signed? The agreement, sir. Look, we, the agreement. Uh, the agreement was signed May 22nd, 2017. Who was the vice president then? Uh, May 22nd, you said? I think it was Mike Pence. And who was the president? Uh, Donald Trump. Okay. And when did you first meet Hunter Biden? I first met Hunter Biden in early 2017. When? When in 2017? The day or the month? An hour the month is good. Month? Uh, I believe I briefly met him in New York, but I spent the, the first meeting I had extensive time with him was in uh, early May 2017. Okay. And that was around the same time that you had those two meetings with Joe Biden, right? It was, but prior to that, I knew. So look, you have said Hunter. you have said I had that, lawyers sir, working sir, through the documents. I, 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 that you're can asking. I please reclaim my time, sir? As okay. I said, we have to move quickly here. Um, uh, unfortunately, you, in your testimony earlier today, one of my colleagues asked you about that meeting at the bar, 45 minutes to 60 minutes. 
Um, and you were also asked about that in your transcribed interview, and in neither of your answers did you mention any discussion that you had at that meeting with Joe Biden about the Chinese business venture. Yet, in grandiose terms here today, you have declared that Joe Biden was involved and that you have mountains of irrefutable evidence to support it. So let's look at the mountains of irrefutable evidence. You provided the committee with a screenshot of a text message that uh, is between James Gilliard and you, dated May 11th, 2017. You see this? I don't know if you can see it. If you can't see, it's uh, just you and James Gilliard, though, right? You remember this text message, I'm sure. Uh, generally, yes. All right. And in it, Gilliard writes, man, you are right. Let's get the company set up, then tell H and family the high stakes and get Joe involved. And two days later, Mr. Gilliard sent an email to you CCing Rob Walker and Hunter Biden in which he suggested a division of the company and included a proposal of, quote, 10% held by H for the big guy, question mark. You remember that, right? Uh, the infamous e uh, email with the big guy? Yes, yeah. I do. Um, did anyone ever respond to that email? Yes, they did, numerous times. Sorry. Hunter Biden ever, himself excuse me, did. Excuse me, I, you're right. Well, no, did I think that's ever, important because sir, Hunter Biden has claimed that he didn't can you respond to it, and he responded okay. to it. The, I believe, you're three just going to filibuster. I reclaim my time that's running out, but I will say no one responded to the big guy reference for 10. Thank you so for making my what, point. They didn't have to respond right. because then, they all knew the big sir, guy was Joe I Biden. I reclaim my time. Mr. Chairman, please control the witness. I would like to say, I would like to uh, get a little extra time, Mr. Chairman, because I want to read what Mr. Gilliar said to the Wall Street Nation, that former Vice President was involved with the 2017 discussions about our potential business structure. I am unaware of any involvement at any time of the former Vice President. The activity in question never delivered and project revenue. Nine days later, the agreement without Joe Biden was signed. You and James Gilliar wanted Joe Biden involved, and that is why Hunter Biden dumped you and did the business That's on his own. That's a blatant lie, Mr. Goldman. Back. You know better. The chairman's time's expired. The chair now recognizes Mr. Higgins from Louisiana for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bobulinski, thank you for being here today, and we appreciate the candor of your responses, sir, which is reflective of, of the way you handled yourself in private testimony and deposition. So I thank you for communicating truthfully to the American people today. I'm going to ask you about the China Energy Fund Committee, the CEFC. You familiar with that, sir? I am. Was this a multi-billion dollar company, like a Fortune 500 company at one time? It's even bigger bankrupt? than that. If you go back and look at its financials in 2016 and 17, it was probably one of the five largest com okay. private companies in China. So exactly. So th this was a this was a, a a major a major operation that had a lot of money, and apparently I'm going to hold up a, a memo here from this is a chart from from the second bank memo, and it shows disbursement of a total of uh, almost $24 million for diamonds. It, so you have, a, you have a major Chinese company spending a lot of money on diamonds, and apparently diamonds were used as a, a means of payment for the Biden family we know that, that, that the Bidens have testified that admitted to having two diamonds. We suspect that there are many, many more, $23 million worth of diamonds. Um, are you familiar with the exchange of, of valuable assets to pay the, the Bidens other than electronic transfers of monies? Are you aware of of uh, payments in diamonds, payment in cash, payment in uh, in board memberships, et cetera? Am I generally aware of it, yes, or was sir. I involved? Yeah, I, I, I read Jim Biden's and Hunter Biden's transcript multiple times. Jim Biden in that transcript references two Biden, or two diamonds that were given to Hunter Biden. One, he implies, was in 2015 by an individual who he, he couldn't recall his name, but the individual's name is Scott O. 
who was a surrogate for CFC, and then apparently a second diamond was given at a meeting in Miami, and I really want to set the record clear. I was not at that physical meeting. I was in Miami, but I was not at that physical meeting. That's what I told the FBI in my transcript interview. Are you aware, Mr. Bobulinski, of, uh, of a pattern of, of bribery, of bribe payments coming from the China Energy Fund Committee? I appreciate that question. I wish everyone on this committee would read the 1,200 pages of testimony in an eight-day trial in the SDNY where Mr. Goldman used to work while the actual trial was going on that accused numerous executives, ultimately Patrick Ho, of corruption, bribing, leaving shoeboxes exactly. of cash to a so, variety of political figures in Africa. Exactly. So, Mr. Bobulinski, from, from, your, from your perch, within the Biden family operations and their interactions with uh, major businesses in China and the exchange of millions of dollars that are known. We track them through bank rec records, through suspicious activity reports, through emails, through communications that this committee has documented. It's, it's, it's no, it's, there's no debate that millions and millions of dollars flowed into the Biden family's bank accounts but the existence of, of other forms of payment is fascinating because diamonds are untraceable. We really don't know how many diamonds the Bidens received, do we? We don't. And for somebody who's been to mainland China probably 10 plus times, Hong Kong probably 15 plus times, yeah, I had hundreds shift. of people, uh, Congressman, I had hundreds of people working for me in mainland China. At one point, I never got a diamond from I any hear, businessman I hear you. or woman. So, Mr. Bobulinski, I shift quickly to a text message. Um, are you familiar with this? It began, it's from a gentleman named James. Generally, yes. Yes, yeah, says, don't mention Joe being involved. It's only when you're face to face. I know you know that, but they are paranoid. And there's a response saying, okay, they should be paranoid about things. And then there's a response saying, for real. So, what is meant by don't mention Joe being involved? It's only when you're face to face. I know you know that, but they are paranoid. Well, I think it outlines how the Bidens operated, not specifically just with CFC. You have Galanis here testifying and numerous other witnesses that have given you a tremendous amount of evidence that outline they, they work to obfuscate it create layers of obstruction. That's the reason why Rob Walker was getting sent millions of dollars instead of Hunter Biden directly. That's the reason why Devin Archer was receiving millions of dollars instead of going to Hunter directly. You guys have a mountain of evidence that stacks high and answers that question on how they obfuscated, they lived in a world of plausible deniability. Thank you, Mr. Bob Alinsky. Mr. Chairman, my time has expired. I yield. Chair now recognize Ms. Norton from D.C. for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Galanis, thank you for appearing voluntarily for this hearing from Alabama. I understand you are currently serving a 189-month sentence in federal prison, almost 16 years, after being convicted of not one but two, uh, but not one, not two, but three different schemes. The victims of your schemes as the judge who presided over your criminal prosecution noted, included, and here I quote, one of the poorest Native American tribes in the country, as well as pension funds held for the benefit of transit workers, longshoremen, housing authority w workers, and city employees, hardworking people, everyday people among others. The court also noted that you personally benefited from these schemes, and again, I quote, using over $8 million, uh, almost $9 million, for lavish personal expenditures, including home expenses, automobiles, travel, clothing, jewelry, expenses, and meanwhile, investors were left with nothing. But this is not your only encounter with prosecutors. In another case, the Security and Exchange Commission charged you in 2005 with accounting fraud in connection 
with your investment, your involvement, rather, with Penthouse Magazine. And in 2010, you were convicted of attempted tax evasion and were sentenced to five years probation in order to pay nearly $2 million in restitution. In imposing your uh, prison sentence, the judge noted that you are, and here I quote, an extremely, extremely talented man, extremely gifted in his interpersonal skills, uncommonly so. He is very persuasive uh, as an individual, and those were the tools in his tool bag uh, of the fraud he committed and the people he ensnared, his intelligence, his interpersonal skills, his charm, if you will. And this is something that is not unseen in people who are commonly referred to as con artists. Another judge who presided over your case referred to you as, quote, a skillful con artist. A skillful con artist, that is who my Republican colleagues are relying on to carry their water in this sham impeachment inquiry after their last star witness, the author of the infam infamous FBI Form 1023, was indicted for lying and outed as a likely Republican agent. It is time we put an end to this pathetic and desperate inquiry. I yield my remaining time to uh, Ranking Member Raskin. Ms. Norton, thank you very much. Uh, so for more than a year now, we've heard <clears throat> innuendo, rumors, propaganda, big lies, but no facts, no evidence that could reasonably support the finding of impeachable high crimes and misdemeanors against President Biden. In our first real impeachment hearing, uh, the majority invited several expert witnesses who came together, and their witnesses agreed with that, that there was nothing that remotely approached the level of proof needed to support a finding of high crimes and misdemeanors that one would impeach a president for. And now we come back again today, and the majority has two witnesses, one the designated con man, as determined by two different federal courts, not without talent, but someone who deploys his talent towards the purposes of exploiting Native American Indian tribes, pensioners, and other innocent investors. And then Mr. Bobolinsky, who offers uh, a lot of rhetoric and a lot of hot air, but absolutely no facts that could indict the President of the United States for high crimes and misdemeanors, impeachable offenses against the Republic the kinds of offenses which James Madison said are great attacks on the Republic itself, great affronts to our Republican form of government. And nobody on their side can even tell us what is the impeachable high crime and misdemeanor, which suggests that they are moving in the direction of criminal referrals and they should start by looking at their own witnesses. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd like to remind the, the ranking member and Ms. Norton, the witness, uh, Mr. Galanis, was partners with Hunter Biden. That's why he's here. We have their partners. You could have invited partners, but you invited uh, this guy. Yeah, Donald Trump's partner, Mr. Uh, Parnas, who oh, was working with Donald, Donald Trump, Trump and Rudy Giuliani. Rudy, Rudy Giuliani's All right. partner. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, chair recognizes Mr. Grofman. Yeah, we got a variety of things I'd like to go through. But first, uh, Mr. Lynch complained about Mr. Galanis testifying from prison. So I'd like to ask unanimous consent to enter into the record the Department of Justice's own press release announcing the, the sentencing of the Democrats' witness Leb Parnas to 20 months in prison for, among other things, making false statements. Without objection on Donald Trump's partner. You're, you're Thank you. Now, now, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, we, we had originally hoped uh, that we'd see a few more witnesses to here today. They're not here, but I would like to run a brief tape because I showed up today hoping I'd be ask, asking these witnesses a little bit more about this tape. Um, I, I know that, uh, you know, there's some mystery or some people feel it's still ambiguous as to how this prosecutor was fired in Ukraine, and I wonder if this tape could do a little bit more to shed light on why that prosecutor was fired and why we want Hunter Biden and Mr. Archer here today. Uh, and uh, so I got Ukraine. and. Uh, 
Um, I remember going over convincing our team, our <coughs> others, to convincing us that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to the press conference. Said, "No, nah. I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, "You're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here." And I think it was what six hours. I looked. I said, "I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money." Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> Got fired, and they put in place someone. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to put that up there because I do eventually want further further efforts made to get Hunter Biden or, or Mr. Archer here because we have Joe Biden himself bragging that he got rid of a, uh, uh, a prosecutor who would have provided his uh, son's business dealings mm -hmm. with uh, a little bit um, more, more tough uh, going or more observation. I'll put it that way. Now, Mr. Bobolinsky, in, in previous interviews, uh, you tra in previous interviews with this committee, you said that Joe Biden not only knew about the family's business dealings, but enabled them and participated in them. You went so far as to say, it's clear to me that Joe Biden was the brand sold by the Biden, by the Biden family. Could you elaborate a little bit why you felt that way again? Correct. Um, that's one of the challenging things I've had to deal with over the last four years with a focus of just simply telling the truth. The obfuscation around these facts are just beyond, <clears throat> beyond insane. So I'll use a meeting at the Four Seasons Hotel in Washington, D.C. that I was not at, but apparently eight to ten Chinese executives of CFC were at with Chairman Yi and Director Zhang. Director Zhang I uh, interacted with extensively. And James Gillier was in that room, Rob Walker, Hunter Biden was in that room. And my understanding, based on Rob Walker's testimony, is that Joe Biden walked into that room, sat down, shook hands with people, and spent five or ten minutes talking about his family, I guess. I was not in the room. People have tried to obfuscate that meeting, like Joe Biden was walking in there to ask about the weather, and Rob Walker said that the Chinese didn't even know that Joe Biden was the former vice president of the United States, which is beyond absurd. The power that those 10 Chinese individuals had to go back to mainland China and say that they were in a room with Joe Biden is the value of what they were giving. Okay. Uh, you stated that the, the, Bi the Biden family concocted a scheme to give Joe plausible deniability. Could you, could you elaborate on that a little bit? Well... I would just point to all the different text messages and communications. They call him the big guy. Um, I wasn't involved with Mr. Galanis or, or Mr. Archer, but they're giving you numerous data points. Um, there was obfuscation. They didn't use his name. They used the big guy. You weren't supposed to talk about it. It was just, uh, you know. And, and, and you personally met with, with the vice president? I did twice. Okay. And it was obvious that he say anything that indicates that you wanted him to help his son, that sort of thing? Well, he thanked me for helping his son and his brother and asked me to keep an eye on them as I walked him out to his car after he gave his speech uh, on the second meeting of the uh, Milken Conference. Okay. Just one other follow-up, and this is kind of maybe a vague question, but I'd like to know it. One of the things that disturbs me about that is the interaction with the Chinese, or that's what we're dealing with today, but obviously other countries as well, that apparently in their own mind, the way you deal with the United States is the way you deal with a say, a corrupt city council or something like that. In other words, you know, you give them money and you get what you want. Do you want to comment on that, or did you hear any stories about that, or was it, did you hear stories that they were surprised how easy it was to buy the U.S. government? Well, I think and, that and it was... Uh, tired, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, answer I, the question, but please feel free to answer the question. Yeah, I think, the C, I think CFC, and there's tremendous evidence, believed that they were bribing the Biden family, and they were doing it via Hunter Biden. It's, it's kind of shameful. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Chair, now recognize Mr. Khanna for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Parnas, can you tell me about your meetings with uh, Dmitry Firtash and why uh, you believe the Trump campaign used his services? 
Yes, uh, well, I was sent to meet with Dmitry Firtish because Dmitry Firtish uh, had uh, resources. He, he's an oligarch that was in Vienna waiting to be extradited to the United States. But he was very close with uh, Vladimir Putin, Ukraine, and uh, lots of uh, characters in that part of the world. And our, my objective at the time was to have him help us lean on Mykola Zlachevsky and get uh, dirt on the Bidens. And what type of dirt were you trying to get? Uh, we were searching for Hunter's uh, hard drive that we were told was out there. We were searching for bank records uh, to validate certain bank records that was given to me, Hunter's personal bank records uh, that was given to me by John Solomon that he said he got from the FBI uh, to validate certain payments that were going uh, for car purchases. But the objective was to try to find a link from uh, any of the payments that would go into uh, Joe Biden's account. And who told you?